So it's time now to check out the Fuso Star Grid for the LH 500 Winterbottom and Richards versus Wind Cup and Lowndes. Richards and Wind Cup to get proceedings underway. Second row of the grid, Will Davison will take the wheel of car two. Fabian Coulthard will be steering car triple one. Stephen Johnson will have the first job for car 17. And Alex Davison for Irwin SP Tools Racing. Rick and Todd Kelly in car number seven will be a formidable outfit. Todd to start the race. And David Bernard and Greg Ritter, the best of the part-timers in the category. Tim Slade and Russell Ingle. And Jason Bright and Carl Ryan will make up positions nine and ten. Jonathan Webb will start for car 18. And John McIntyre partnering Daniel Gorn and all Kiwi Affair. That one, position 13, belongs to Team BOC of Jason Richards and Cam McConville. And Craig Baird and Paul Dumbrell. Look out for them for car 22. Bagwana and Noski, position 15. Alberto and Thompson for 16. Car 33. Well, Gary Rogers Motorsport will be expecting a lot out of Michael Caruso and Lee Holdsworth. Owen and Price alongside them. Making up the top 20 are Luke Yildon and Dean Canto and David Reynolds and Andy Prio. Just one of our internationals. That is where we find our co-commentator Mark Scaife. He's alongside Greg Murphy from position 21. 23 and 24 go to Team Vodafone and WOW Racing. Bradley and Andrew Jones in car number 14. Positions 25, three-time World Superbike Champion. Welcome to the category, Troy Bayless. Looking forward to seeing what Troy's got in store for us this afternoon. Taz Douglas and Sam Walter, David Wall and Leanne Tander will start from position 28. And the final two rows of the grid, High Tech Oils Racing and Jack Daniels Racing. And then positions 31 and 32 belong to Fujitsu and Super Chief Auto Racing, Owen Kelly and Paul Morris with Paul. To get the job done, first of all. What a sight, hey? Fast straight ahead. 4.45 kilometres worth of spectacular track. That's what's on the radar at the moment. We're probably expecting it to pick up with the winds forecast to start coming in a little bit harder later on in the afternoon and this really is a wonderful circuit with so much history in a turn four honda the hairpin round here is siberia it's fast it's flowing up over the hill this is where the elevation kicks in back down for turn 10 and then these two are screamers 11 and 12 back along gardner straight and you're taking aim at well, a whole lot of water is what you're looking at outside the, uh, the windscreen you don't want to end up there Scenery is something to behold. Well, an exciting time, guys. As we know, teamwork in V8 supercars is so important, but none more so than in these endurance races. And it's important the two drivers work together, but are reasonably physically compatible. Now, the biggest height difference we've found along pit lane is David Wall and Leanne Tander. There's about 30 centimetres difference in height between the two. So that means when Leanne jumps in, she's got to put a seat insert in there and try and get herself comfortable in the car. There are some parts of the car that are actually outside her reach. Guys that fit well together, would you believe? Greg Murphy and Mark Scaife, although Murph says he has had to just tighten up the seat belts a little bit after Scaife sort of off pre-season. Now, we talked about at the top of the show a little bit about some of the strategy options. I can tell you, up and down pit lane right now, it is like pulling teeth trying to get that information out of teams because if someone can do 38 laps they are at a huge advantage if their ability is to do two stops there's a couple of teams that are close but i think what you're going to see is them play to the weather now if we get a little bit of a drizzle that means you can get out of the throttle a little bit conserve a little bit more fuel so i think this race is really going to open up all right thanks mark larkham we've got mark larkham mark beretta brian ingerson covering uh, pit lane aaron noonan is also alongside us in the commentary and uh, troubles here for car number 12. I think you'll find it's Dean Fiore behind the wheel with uh, Troy Bayless. And they're parked over there. So many internationals, so many rookies, so many new faces. Aaron, who are we looking out for on the other side of the, the non-regulars? Well, so many unknowns, isn't it, Matt? I think car 34 is the one to watch out for. It's starting as far up the front as any of those non-full-timers. David Bernard, he's got the experience. He's a guy to look out for. But all of the regular suspects up the front, it's going to be really hard for these guys who don't have the experience and don't race every weekend. He's probably looking for his helmet, is he? <laughs> I've got it. Brad Jones there. Back again this weekend on board the Ford Performance Racing Falcon. Stephen Richards at the helm. These guys pole position. Great form 
and this car looks to be performing very well. A couple of interesting leaps in performance in the recent past. The FPR cars have definitely lifted their game, and so have the Stone Brothers racing car, which you can include Jason Bright in the Fujitsu entry there. So it's good. You know, you need more, more people at the top of the tree where you can get it. And just confirming, Neil, as you know, that you'll see a lot of these cars have that amber light in the front windscreen. That's the one you've got to look for, meaning that the B driver is in the car. That'll be extinguished when the A driver's in. And I'll just clarify there, we had the wrong graphic pop up. That will be Jamie Wincup inside car 888. So Jamie to start the job for Team Vodafone. Stephen Richards at the front of the field for Ford Performance Racing and the Castrol FPR Falcon. 32 cars, 113 laps is the distance. This is race 17 of the 09 championship. One of the Fujitsu entries has come straight in. Car number 21 of Brad Lowe. So that's a pit lane start. Smart thing to do there, top it up with fuel and get out of the ruck on the first lap. Fast to switch as best you can. So here we go. Will Davison and Fabian Coulthard on the second row of the grid. It's an all Ford front row. The roar down to turn one is something very, very exciting in Australian motorsport. A good, clean start. The SP Irwin Tools entry has made a beauty. Alex Davison threading the needle. He's going to jump up a couple of spots, but Stephen Richards and Jamie Winker take it around one. Carl Reinler had a tardy start in the Fujitsu car. Winker the ascendancy. Richo's going to get muscled out here from pole back to third by turn two out of the southern loop. So Wing Cup will take it through. Will Davison into second. There's Stephen Richards and there is Alex Davison. Down to four. A bit of crunch time as they all get in close. Nudge from one of the Jack Daniels races. You've got to adjust your thinking when you go into a 500 kilometre race. Getting involved into too much nose to tail nonsense or a push and shove in a 65k corner is just plain dumb. So they've got to manage that. They'll have been told by their team managers they know they've got to get through the first few laps clean. A little margin here now for Wind Cup. Just enough for him to concentrate on the perfect race line and his own car bringing temperatures up, brakes and tyres, and his mind for that matter, and getting a feel for the grip level in the car. There's the field. See where your favourite driver is. Davison is second. Stephen Richards, Alex Davison fourth. Coulthard. Then Bernard, Stevie Johnson, Todd Kelly, Russell Ingle, Paul Dumbrell. Standing lap of 141 for Jamie Winkup. Now single file. Somebody's got a lot of blue smoke coming out the left rear corner of their car heading into turn one at the moment. Someone in the midfield. Car number five it is. And yeah. Is that a guard rubbing? It is. Look at the amount of damage in the left that rear corner. Just a little Luke bit Gilden. of rubbing on the rear tyre. We're keeping an eye on it now, so just keep pressing on, mate. Luke Gilden at the helm of that car at the moment, and that's had a fair whack. That's risky leaving it out in the high-speed circuit. It's not a little bit of rubbing. It's a lot of rubbing. This man that you're looking at was super off the start. He ducked and weaved, he went left, right, and then popped out on the right-hand side of the circuit to go up a couple of positions. And I reckon in that chain effect, it put a little bit more pressure on Stephen Richards at the front of the field, because he was already under attack from Wind Cup and then Will Davison, and he knew what was coming behind him. Todd Kelly in car seven making a move. Alex Davison aggressive on the inside out of turn 10. The amount of throttle hesitation required to get the nose right on line there. You've just got to take a little lift coming into the final turn, turn 12. That's Garth Tander on the left of screen. A 134.8, fastest lap of the race, Jamie Wincup. 0.6 of a second is the gap, and that is a nervous moment as Alex Davison looks down the inside at one. Tell you who the other good
good start it was. Cromley was David Bernard in car 34. He's jumped up two spots since the start from eight to six, and he was the only other guy to do a 134 on that last lap, which is the first flyer. for Alex Davison. He's got a lot of international experience and it's taken a bit of time to come to terms with the V8 task. We've seen some great performances so far this year. And he's nibbling away at the back of Stephen Richards at the moment. And Bernard's going with the full-time regulars in car 34 running. There he is in sixth spot, but there's already been a few movers. Paul Dumbrell, 14th to 10th in the second time HRT car. Tony Alberto, 16th to 11th. So the regular drivers at ease in the early laps, just starting to pick off the non-regulars. Hey guys, Tim Edwards down at Ford Performance Racing, keeping a very close eye on Luke Yulden's car. They're going to leave him out there, but uh, boy, they're not happy with the hit that he's had. It's quite a big one. And that's a good performance from David Bernard, while the car's got a lot of fuel on it. It's about 100 on kilos. Okay, Keep pressing it's Chris O'Toole, the car controller, team manager in the middle of the group, addressing his guys, and he's doing scenarios. We may do this, boys. If it's got this, I want you to do that. He's just steady the ship, get the crew together, get them thinking clearly about what needs to be dealt with and what doesn't. It's pretty crystal clear that Stephen Richards is a man under attack at the moment. Alex Davison is going for him. Fabian Coulthard wants to go with him, and David Bernard is patiently waiting. So those four guys there are in particular the three behind car six are waiting to pounce. Got him. He's, when you're under, under the inside there at... Uh, at two, you should be able to get the job done, and he has, yep. And sometimes you can hang on the outside down to three, and that's what Richo wants to do. And that positions you nicely for the right-hander, but you've got to get through three flat, and that's hard. Oh, he's done it. Nice work. Well done, Richo. He hung on there, and he's going to take Fabian with him. You would never have thought that Alex Davison could actually drop a spot out of that, and it looks as though he might. Fabian Coulthard on the outside here. Alex is going to have to really keep his nerve. You dip your hat to both those guys, Alex and Stephen, then. They gave each other racing room. It was a great display from both of them. Now, Will's car's just normalised a little bit. He's adjusted biases, probably had a little tweak with the anti-roll bars. Mark Winterbottom on the left of screen. Smiling, but, you know, when you're sitting there watching your car go around, it's masking the terror beneath. Oh, that, was, that was just total guts. Well, it was a good move. Stephen sat up high at turn two, and he let Alex get under there, but he stayed his ground, and it's not easy to keep your foot on the throttle when you're one car with wide of the line at turn three. Check this out. Pointing south. Sixth gear before the bridge. 280 kilometres an hour. Little white mark means it's time to break. Fifth gear. Margin closing. Very easy to go off under brakes here in turn two. If you lock the front left corner there, you're out and the boonies in a heartbeat. This is where Alex Davison got underneath Richo the previous lap. Extension to the kerb on the right hand side this year, it's much nicer. This is three, where we saw that great display in the previous lap. 230 odd Ks, flat. Back to second for turn four. Oh, big moment down here for somebody. Is that an engine fail? Fabian Coulthard, you'd have to say it is. Oh, oh barbecue! Fabian, just came up somewhere, yep. Do I stop? Uh, uh, yep. That's probably a good idea. Into the front there, OK. He's left behind some presents oh, for the rest of it. Oh, stop, is that what you said? There's oil everywhere. Everywhere, yep. So, uh, some kind of... When you get out, if there's no fire marshal there, hit the fire Ready bomb on the corner. Boards and flag, safety car, boards and flag, safety car, scramble, safety car, scramble. Voice of Tim Schenken, race director, the instruction probably from, I think, Lee Geyer, was when you get out of the car, hit the fire bomb just behind the plenum. It's just in front of the windscreen on the car because obviously they don't want to lose a $400,000 car. They want to pull up near the marshals. While all that was happening, Alex Davison did get hold of Stephen Richards, so he's got in front as we just uh, cool down car triple one. And Fabian is out. The 4X Gold Petter safety car is now out on the circuit. The Zinger replay, this will show how Alex... Oh, no, that's the Fabian Coulthard bit. OK, so it's launched yeah, right coming into turn three, or at the end of turn two, and then... He's done a good job to try and stay out of everybody's way, but that would have been a very scary moment for a few of them following because they 
would have seen and felt the oil there and at three you're fully committed it's a very strange looking failure like something's popped off it opportunity here to squirt some fuel in go pit lane is clear go Guys, the first hard luck story of the race, Dean Fiore, a broken alternator belt on the formation lap, so they will not be able to take any further part in this race. So multiple superbike champion Troy Bayliss will have to wait until Bathurst for his first V8 supercar race. Safety car, just be careful by indicating to the car so there's no confusion, uh, and then confuse that with an overtaking sign. If you just uh, drive where uh, you should be on the track, that's up to the cars behind to follow. Thank you. That's a signal from race director Tim Schenk into the safety car. So Jamie Winkup is the race leader as we slow it down on lap six of the Allen H500. The brothers Davison, a second and third. Will in car two, Alex in car nine. Stephen Richards, the pole man in fourth. David Bernard off to a brilliant start for Gary Rogers' team. He's fifth. Then it's Stephen Johnson and Todd Kelly. Russell Ingle, Paul Umbrell, Michael Caruso. He's made up a lot of ground, 17th to 10th. Just outside, Tony Delberto, Jonathan Webb, David Reynolds, Steve Owens, 14th. Then it's Yulin and McConville. Johnny McIntyre, Mark Noski, Mark Scaife is 19th. Alan Simonson in the second Vodafone Falcon. He runs in 20th. So we've seen about four or five cars head to the pits to take advantage of this safety car and just top up on fuel because they're at the back of the pack anyway. So they may as well. One of them was the Jason Bright Carl Reindler car, which Reindler is starting the race in. Some of the fluid on the track get turned forward. Yeah, JW, another lap, under 8 kilometres an hour, over. And we'll have another lap of safety car, but Reindler is in the situation. He's very much the co-driver to Jason Bright, so they'll get his laps out of the way and then let the Fujitsu Racing Boss drive all the way through to the end of the LH 500. So they're going to go and have to do it from behind now because that car's back in 27th in among Andrew Jones, Paul Morris, Mark McNally, all cars that made a stop and took advantage of that safety car. So Winkup will cruise it back down the Gardner Strait. But what heartbreak for Wilson Security Racing. Started fourth on the grid. Fabian Coulthard's had a strong 2009 where he stepped it up at his first podium at Simmons Plains in Tasmania. They're out with just four laps on the board of 113. We thought reliability might be an issue coming into these endurance races, but we didn't think it would happen quite so early within just 16 and a half kilometers of racing. Quite amazing. Of course, today there's 200 championship points up for grabs for the winning combination. Both drivers get 200 points to their championship tally. And don't forget, Winkup and Davis, and they run one two in the race. They're one to in the championship. It's amazing when you change around all of the variables, all of the permutations, and still it's the same guys with the same teams that are in the same positions up in front. It's lap seven at the moment behind safety car as the Fabian Coulthard and Michael Patrizzi car is removed from where it came to rest on the exit of turn four. So that leaves us with 30 runners in the field. Andrew Fisher and Brad Lowe are currently in pit lane. So there are 28 cars on track at the moment. Andrew Fisher just resuming in the Jesus Falcon car number 13. Well, Troy, that's a tough break in your V8 supercar debut. Yeah, it's uh, it's a shame these things happen though. I know, you know, of course, but um, on the formation lap, the cars dropped some belts, and uh, as soon as the car didn't make it back on, under its own esteem, uh, we can't restart the race. Uh, and now, since then, we found out it's quite serious. So it wasn't meant to be today. Well, we'll see you at Bathurst. Thanks, Troy. Cheers. Yeah, but good to see him attack the mountain too. I, you know, he just couldn't wait. He's, he's taken to this with vigour. He's put in the hard work and it's a pity that Troy didn't get a shot behind the wheel but you know he's had tougher days in racing I reckon. This safety car period has implications for um, the way fuel is being managed in this race. We've been second guessing the notion as to whether or not anybody is able to get away with running it as a two-stop, three-segment race but uh, 
to the best of our intelligence, we don't reckon that's doable. However, when you get enough safety car interruptions here and there, you just never know, depending on how the balance of the race works out. We always knew there'd be safety cars. But no, we're taking to the control line. And uh, safety car lights are out, so we'll go racing now. And, and of course, the weather. You're not saving fuel. So they've just told him he's not saving I'm fuel. So they've just got a gain. So away we go. Look at the car yawing. Look at it sliding, coming onto the track. He lost a heap of ground. He'd be a bit vulnerable here. Will's got a better run on him. Much better run. Jamie Winkup and Will Davis have won two in the race, won two in the championship. Down to turn one, Alex Davison has been a good mover already. He's third. So Jamie's car's just tyres have cooled out a little bit and uh, that car's not quite as settled now just at the restart as it was at the very beginning. So this is the order. It's Wing Cup. Will Davison. Alex Davison, Stephen Richards, David Bernard at car 34. He got him. He got him. Then it's Stephen Johnson, Todd Kelly, Russell Ingall, Paul Dumbrella, Michael Caruso make up our top ten. And the, that's a notable two for Caruso. He's found seven spots since the start. The oil will have played a bit of a yeah, role in that. that. That's right. You've got to be careful. Seriously careful. Moving up, Michael Caruso. So top left is looking outside Will Davison's car, up to Jamie Wincup. Bottom left is looking forward to the SP Tools entry. So you're riding with Will top left, and bottom left you're riding with Stevie Richards. And that's Russell Engel eighth in the super cheap entry. They've completed eight laps. Will Davison, notice him just searching around behind the leader at the moment, looking for fresh air. So he's already had a radio instruction. Don't sit under the back of the Team Vodafone car. We need to get cool air in the front of it. They may have opted for a little bit too much blanking in the front of that car as 21. Brad Lowe comes into the pits, damaged in the front right-hand corner. Actually, I think the tyres deflated or off the bead, it is. So, uh, Will was hunting around on the front straight, then just looking to make sure he gets a gulp of cool air. Car 55 with Tony D'Alberto. Played a little bit of a defensive line there in front of Jonathan Webb. David Reynolds, by the way, is just perched behind Jonathan Webb back in 13th spot. So Wincup keeps control. Will Davison is now having to fight off a different kind of challenge in the form of one Alex Davison. There's a surprise. Bounds is laughing. <laughs> it's a shot. This is a bit of a first here. The brothers Davison very rarely have ever raced one another in an actual championship together, and vi even more rarely on the track at the same time. I can't remember these two guys actually being in the fight together. This is a first. And that message from Matt Nilsson then to Will Davison, that's your brother behind you. That, depending on your relationship, that could be good or bad. <laughs> but they get on well. I, in fact, left the circuit paddock last night. Both of the boys were together just talking about their day. But it won't make any difference when it comes to uh, whether or not you get an extra favour one way or another, because you won't. Depends on the shape of the car behind you too, doesn't it? He'd know that Alex has got a flyer of a car at the moment. That's car 51. Mark Scaife, 18. Well, Ross Stone is a man of understatement, but I spoke to him this morning in their garage and, and he said, yeah, we've got some pace. And, and when Ross says that, he means it. They've had a couple of good outings now. The Scaife's 18th sandwich between John McIntyre and Alan Simonson. Remember, they paid the penalty yesterday when the two sprint gas cars got together, unfortunately. It was one of those awkward things. Murph was down the inside of Jason Barguana, and when wheels interlock, race cars, anything's possible. And for Greg, 
he speared to the inside onto the grass and so that that really hurt them and when you're down the order in the field when you give 100 meters to a, a competitor of similar speed down the road on the grid it's very very hard to get it back so uh, they'll be fighting for a long time through this race to recover some ground now look at that gap it's opened up now so once things are sorted out good move there for david bernard he's That's doing a great job Do you know exactly what happened? Basically, I was hard on the throttle and pulled forth gear and, you know, all these wild noises and flames and things, you know, are popping up from here, there and everywhere. And, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, hard, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to swallow after being so strong all weekend. But um, it's unfortunate, but we've just got to carry on and be stronger and tougher for the next one. Right, on to Bathurst. Does it have to move on, won't we? All the best, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Dale Wood and Carl Reindler off the road. They've got together somehow. Dale Wood still off the road. He's going to skip turn two and pop out the other side. Ooh, oh, this looks perilous. Oh, this actually looks crazy. He, he clearly didn't watch the Formula Ford race earlier on in the day where a Formula Ford nearly disappeared. Or listen to Tim Schenken in the driver's briefing who said, don't go down there between two and three. Well, he's going to have to come into the pits now because he's filled it full of grass. Here's how it happened. Reindler oh. in the Jason Bright car on the inside. Turn and one incident. Jones. Man, Brad Jones is a... Oh. No, he wasn't. It's Andrew Jones in the middle of all that. So uh, he got an eyeful of that nonsense. <laughs> he made it around OK. Not by much. You know what? In, in that spot, it's not a bad result. It could have been a whole lot worse. And watch this. He just gulps up half of the turf here. Well, they're going to be they're going to be angry with him back at Kelly Brothers Racing because, I mean, Everybody knows that that exists down there between turn two and three, and uh, well, they're a race team, not a turn supplier. Yeah, it's a, that's a very odd thing. But I mean, when your heart rates up and you've had a moment like that, sometimes the clear thinking process. How good's this guy going at the moment? David Bernard, car 34, with Greg Ritter for this race, and of course going towards Bathurst. Longtime supporters of the V8 Supercar Championship will know that David's been around for quite a while. He's been in and out of a full-time drive, but lately he's been the go-to man. Oh, that's where uh, Dale deposited the rest of that lawn. Easy to forget too, Matty, that both Bernard and Ritter are former winners of the 500, but not here. Yeah. David Bernard at Queensland and Greg Ritter at Sandown as a co-driver five years ago with Marcus Ambrose, so they know how to get the job done. And just temperament too, I think, is what they look for in that driver pairing as well. Two very solid personalities. Very similar personalities, never going to go off the Richter scale, but they are really getting the work done. And upstaging car 33, even though Michael Caruso is doing a blistering job. He's made up seven spots since the start. So Gary Rogers Motorsport has a lot to be happy about in the early stages of this race. Just following Paul Umbrell, this is ninth and 10th. And actually, Lee will feel and Michael will feel a little bit out of whack here because they're in car 33. That's actually Michael's car but with Lee's number. So it's got half of an identity crisis going on at the moment. Let's just hang here for a second and you can check out your favourite driver. So Wing Cup leads, Davison, Alex Davison third, David Bernard is fourth. That's Paul Dumbrell, so that's ninth and tenth. Command just went out to Will Davison to conserve fuel. How do you do that? Well, short shift a little earlier. Don't use all of the available 7,500 revs. Pull the gear two, 300 revs early. Just advance the throttle a little slower coming off the turns. Might make the difference of one to 200 millilitres per lap. Neil, the other areas you just talk about conserving fuel, talking to a couple of engine builders, you know, where else are they searching for it? You talked earlier about pulling that fuel out. Um, enrichment enhancement is one area they pull some out, which if you've got the old holy carburetor, I guess that's what you'd call, you know, your accelerator pump. But they also, they're that desperate, they pull it out of cranking. So when the car's actually starting on the button, they'll even pull a little fuel out of it then. I mean, that's desperate stuff. Enrichment enhancement. Sounds like a bad legal firm. <laughs> Let me write that down. Caruso threw on Paul Umbrell. And easily too, Aaron. I mean, he just rounded him up and went past like Umbrell wasn't even there. So that was for position nine. 
Paul Dumbrell moving alongside the garage into car 22 and the Toll Holden Racing Team suiting up. 29th driver in Holden Racing Team history. Yeah, he's one behind Will Davison, who's the 28th when it comes to the Enduros, the 40th anniversary of Holden's factory squad. Forza 3 leaderboard looks like this. Lowndes and Wing Cup with Jamie behind the wheel has a 1.7 second advantage. Mark Scaife, the Sprint Gas Commodore, had lost 18th spot oh. to Alan Simonson. So at the end of lap 13, they're bringing him into pit lane. The team waiting by, and he will stay on board. Fuel tyres, and a roll centre adjustment as well by the looks of things. So they're getting him out of the traffic, topping the fuel, and sending him back onto what will be very clear track. We at see this stage some, of the race. some teams do this, Aaron, where they just they lock to a plan and they map out how they're going to do it fuel-wise and all the other things can come and, come and go. Craig Baird preparing to take over from Paul Dumbrell in car 22. He's ready to go. Andy Prio suiting up as well, teaming up with David Reynolds. A bit different from what he's used to with the two-litre BMW in the World Touring Car Championship. And Garth Tander not suited up just yet in terms of helmet, but this is the leader, Jamie Winkup, lap 14. This is a fight between Johnson, Kelly and Ingle, 6th, 7th and 8th. All regular drivers, all paired with their regular teammates as well. Ingle paired up with young Tim Slade, was going to drive with Paul Morris, but Morris couldn't quite fit into the seating position and was cramping after only a couple of laps. That's not going to help in a 113 lap race. So young Tim Slake gets a very big opportunity here at Phillip Island to step up alongside the enforcer. This team's announced that they're going to have triple eight built Commodores for next year and that Ingle has re-signed as has Super Chief Auto for the next couple of years. So there'll be plenty more enforcing going on in the next couple of seasons. Caruso and Dumbrell just in behind. feel of an endurance race here where the guys aren't absolutely leading on the tyres. Trying to short shift just that little bit more, a little bit of fuel here and there. It all adds up over the course of the day and it buys you flexibility, it buys you some strategy points. You don't want to spend it at this stage of the race. You've got to save it up in the bank and spend it later. A long, long way to go. Wing Cup leads. The margin's nearly two seconds. Back to Will Davison. Alex Davison, a strong start in the UNSP Tools Falcon. And David Bernard is having a brilliant day. It's his first time in a Commodore. He's always driven Ford Falcons. Maybe he should have changed a long time ago. It's amazing how things change around. He's off to a great start, but there's a long, long way to go. This is the fight for 6th, 7th and 8th. back out to the racing and this is a really good fight unfolding between 6th, uh, 7th and 8th. You're riding with Stephen Johnson looking back at car 7 and Todd Kelly and Russell Ingle is in that fight as well. So Junior is 6th, Todd 7th and Russell 8th. Not terribly far removed from them. Michael Caruso, 33 in ninth, then Paul Dumbrell and Tony Delberto, 11th in the Botlo entry. That's a good solid start to the day for him. And that stop of Scaifes has now dropped him back down to 29th, so they're working to pretty much a predetermined formula. These guys are working, oh, a little bit unsettled for car number seven, but these guys are working towards tagging on to Stephen Richards who's a little bit further up the road in fifth. Back we go to car 55. So this is position 11 and Jonathan Webb has a look on the inside to steal that position from Tony Dalberto. 
and so the the plan at Sprint Gas Racing for Mark Scape basically works backwards from the end of the race. So by taking that stop where they have, the, the race settles down now into some sensible chunks. And so Mark's got to get past the 38 lap mark. And uh, Greg Murphy will do the back end. One, two, three, four, five cars in this little group. Webb D'Alberto, Bundy Red Racer of David Reynolds, Steve Owen returning to the category, the Fujitsu champion. Former full-time driver. Right, mate. Just keep running the race you need to run. You're in the team Autobahn car and Cam McConville in 15th for Team BOC. Rod Nash, team principal for Bottolo Racing. Linking up with Tony Delberto. That's a relationship that's going to end. It's been announced at the end of the season. Well, Craig Lowndes, it's sort of relaxing sitting in here, but I know you want to be out there. Jamie's done a good job, good start. Well, he has. He's got a really good start. He's obviously looking after the car. It's um, um, going down through turn one, obviously, on the outside. is never pretty, but he managed to get around that. Obviously, get into turn two on the inside of uh, Stevie Richards. And so far, Touchwood, we've uh, had a good clean car. He's radioed in, said he's comfortable. Um, looking after, obviously, fuel economy at the moment, obviously, uh, trying to get as much out of it as we can. We want to do as least amount of uh, stops as we can. Um, to do that, obviously, we need to look after the fuel. He, he's comfortable. He's uh, circulating at a pace that's uh, in our window, so it's all good. Uh, speaking of stops, when are you jumping in? Uh, hopefully soon. No, I don't know. We, uh, obviously, uh, one of our biggest requirements is, is uh, either, either one of us has to do 38 laps as a minimum. So, uh, you know, we'll see where he gets to in this stint and see what happens. But really, at the moment, uh, he's comfortable in the car. I'll leave him in there. All right, Lousy, good luck today. Enjoy the telecast. I am. Thank you. Bit of a weird deal when you get into the enduro races and you're sharing your car and all the normal mental physical processes you go through getting into and ready and through the race all kind of weird because the the peak of the start comes and goes and you're there with a heart rate of about 70. it seems a bit weird <laughs> hang on you're talking about lousy <laughs> i think it's permanently jammed <laughs> it's, it's flat out isn't it constantly 700. so this is the front left hand corner of the Team Vodafone car being driven by Jamie Whitcup and you see that wheel just wagging in the air through turn 11 and it'll have very little work to do when it gets through the last corner as well here it is at 12 it's barely touching the road negative camber is the inclination of those uh, wheels that you see where the outside of the tyre isn't doing much and the inside's doing a lot until you load it, which is exactly what happens there in turn one. And then the negative camber comes into play because it compensates for that tyre distortion. A perfect example of why you have it, because you want the maximum tyre face on the road under the maximum load. And this charge from David Bernard is continuing. He's closing in on the team where he's been driving in the Enduros the last couple of years. Right onto the back of Alex Davison. There's a little sideways there on the exit of two as well. Yeah, this is um, very scary down here. Consider there's gravel and there's also dirt on the outside, plus a bit of oil. Man of the match so far, David Bernard, just for settling in and being quick on the podium with James Courtney in the last couple of years at Bathurst. And he said this morning when I had a yak to him after the warm up, he comfortably said, Yeah, just slotted straight in. I feel good. And these guys chop and change so much in the modern era, you forget. Oh, oh no, no, Alex Davison. That front right is rubbing and smoke going everywhere. David Bernard's job has just been made a whole lot easier. And they just called him in this lap, so oh, oh, it's, go. it's gone, Let's it's go. gone. Oh. It never looked right. Oh, Ouch. Kept it off the fence. Yeah, good job. I wonder whether he flat spotted okay, it. It didn't look right under brakes at turn four, did it? Mate, because there's a reason why he lost all that, that, that oh, zest and all that ground. See, that was... That was a scary moment. I was holding my breath because it's a lot of pace up there. Now, he's got to safely get back on the road and then get across to the other side for pit lane entry. Oh, that's just um, really hammered their day, unfortunately. off the circuit here for quite a while. The amount of cars that have gone off done the job for them. That's a real bummer for Alex Davison because he was he was flying. Here we go, Russell Ingle. Gets that spot off Todd Kelly. So the enforcer moves up to sixth. Yeah guys right front puncture for Alex Davison. Real disappointment. Yeah right at the wrong time. I mean there is no good timers. Todd gets a 
a little bit back on Russell. So it was going, going here. Bernard clears out of the way and then it's gone. Boom, look at that. And by now, he's done an awesome job to get it through here. Use the kitty litter. Release the brake, pop out on the other side, just enough to get onto the grass. Well, the amount of dirt and rubbish that was dragged on the track earlier by perhaps Dale Wood, there was so much of it around the place, it wouldn't be a surprise that Alex has found some of it. So the curiosity for me here is whether or not that's just an outright puncture because something penetrated the tyre surface, or has it come as a result of a flat spot? Quite easily done in a couple of places around here. Trying to have a bit of a gawk at that tyre as it comes off. The thing they don't want to do is drop off the lead lap, which because they, they, they actually call him before we saw him go off up at the top at Lukey Heights, they called him as in this lap, so he'd already obviously had a conversation with them about it. And he's down a lap. Yeah, that's, that's sad. There he is. And these things on one cold tyre and three warm, when you're in them, it's like they have a mind of their own. You can't believe they could be so unstable. Todd Kelly's come in as well in car seven. The result is that on the racetrack, Jamie Wincup has a 3.1 second lead from Will Davis and David Bernard into third. Let's see what the Kelly brothers do. There's oh, a switch. Oh, oh big oh. one for car eight going the wrong way. Kent McConville. How he didn't take out anyone then. This will be a safety car. How on earth did so, that happen? So it gets set for a lot of uh, a lot of pit lane activity and. Uh, has he gone straight through at turn one somehow? Because that, that, the angles on that bother me. That's safety weird. Car boards and flags, safety car boards and flags, safety car standby. So has he got? I, yeah, I think yeah. Cameron might have gone straight through off the bottom of the straight, has he? He's well, popped out the other side and very nearly been cleaned up. Look, there's the leftovers. My goodness, what's this? Oh. Oh. Okay. That's what Steve Owen... Oh, no. He is no going to go firing through here in turn one. You can't imagine how dangerous that is. Gee, I'll tell you what, the, oh. uh, the, the, this is just sheer luck that oh. that wasn't one of the worst accidents we've ever seen in the industry. Just sheer luck. And uh, this will be scrutinised because this is something that you don't want to see happening. Oh. Man. Oh. That is insane. Watch this, so there's contact here coming down the main straight with Steve Owen. Up he goes, all four in the air. And from now, well, this is as scary as you want to go. Not only that deep into turn one, but also backwards across that tarmac, back through the grass. Wind Cup, on all four. Davis and Bernard, ready. Richards, Johnson, Ingle, Caruso. Basically, all the contenders ready. are in, as I suggested. Delberto leads. Hold. Hold Delberto is about the only Disappear. guy who has not Hold come into the fuel. pits. Everybody's Hold in. Ready for the next. Jim Beam queuing cars. Check it out, it's peak hour. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Yeah, boys, just spoke to Wally Story down at Team BOC, and uh, they have uh, been on the radio, obviously, to Cam McConville. They're very upset about Steve Owen forcing Cam off the track that caused what could have been that, uh, well, what could have been a really nasty incident. Well, it was bad enough, Barretts. I mean, I'm uh, just thankful that Cam's OK, because that could have been a whole lot worse. Well, our pictures and our replays sort of see it so late that it's hard to know who was doing what to who down there, but the fact is they interlock wheels somehow, and uh, that was a massive moment. So amazing stuff at Phillip Island, and Cam McConville, car number eight, he's got it back to the pits and it's in the garage. That was frightening. It was David Bernard that was the car on the track that he narrowly missed. He had no brakes, no steering, no chance there. Whoa, that was scary. But the thing is now, there's only a handful of cars. Tony Delberto's the race leader, has not pitted. Paul Morris is second. Remember, he pitted earlier on and topped up on fuel. Nathan Pretty's third, hasn't pitted. Carl Reinders fourth and Dale Woods fifth. They both had that drama earlier on together and had been into pit lane in McConville. He is angry. Sixth is Wing Cup. He's the best of the cars to have pitted from the lead of the race, of course. Then Will Davison, 
Stephen Richards, Stephen Johnson, David Bernard. Rick Kelly definitely did get into car seven. Mark Scaife's 12th, having stopped early, remember. Then it's England, Reynolds, Simonson and Dumbrell. Although it looked like Craig Baird jumped into that car, car number 22. So we'll have to wait for our timing screens to update with just who is in which of the cars. Alex Davison is 28th. He's one lap down in the Irwin SP Tools Falcon. Endurance races, hey, they throw up the unknowns. It's been quite amazing. There is car 17. It's come out in front of the number 34 Valvoline car. Look at the sandblasting on the Bundaberg red car, which I'd expected Andy Prio's got behind the wheel of, considering he was getting ready to take over from David Reynolds. We've just completed lap 22. There's the leader, Tony Delberto, sharing today with Andrew Thompson, full-time driver last year, but it's his first time back behind the wheel of a V8 this season. There's Wing Cup, Will Davison, and Stephen Richards. Thanks, Ed, Tim. Yeah, uh, it was quite a spectacular ride, Barretts, but uh, classic example of why Stephen Owen wonders why he's not in the category full time. That was the most amateur incident I've ever seen in my life in V8 supercars. It ruined our race. He blocked me for eight laps up the inside of the had to run onto the straight. He kept blocking the inside line, which obviously when you're in the main game, you understand you can't do that. Had a run at the inside and he just turned and clipped my wheel at, you know, 280k an hour. So. Sorry to the boys because we had a fast car, but uh, that's what happens with once a year races, I suppose. Mate, on to Bathurst. All the best. Yep. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Yeah, chin up, Cam. That's just one of those things that you never see coming, never want to see coming. And I, I am absolutely blown away that David Bernard managed to miss that one. Yeah, well, and, uh, and there's nothing but luck involved in that. It's just, just a remarkable, scary incident. Steve Owen was involved here last year with Russell Ingle cranky with him uh, for racing vigorously as well so uh, yeah certainly Cam expressing his feelings strongly there about that one but we'll wait and find out a bit more about it later in the day when they analyze it so the bottle O team of Tony Dalberto car number 55 will assume the race lead started from 16th position they decided not to pit Paul Morris is behind them car 67 he's already been in Nathan Pretty is third in car 15, he hasn't pitted either. The rest of the field has. So you've basically got three classes here. The guys who have not stopped, the guys who stopped early, and the guys who stopped under that safety car. This has helped Mark Scaife in the sequence. Remember, they stopped on their own, and uh, they didn't have to come in then when everybody else did. And uh, all the senior drivers being counselled for patience at the moment, because now the field is scrambled, it gets messy. Jamie Winkup had to put maximum force into car triple eight to get it around Carl Weinler, the green machine car 25. And he's found himself some clean air. So we're on lap 24 at 113. They're still rubbing panels. That time it was Stephen Richards caught up with Nathan Pretty. I said at the top of the show, when you double the size of the field with non-regular drivers, you double the trouble. In fact, I think that the figure may be bigger than that. Look at this, here's oh, more trouble. There's more trouble for sure. It's because the racing level's so high for the rest of the year, the intensity's so high, and the trust levels are so high, and you get to know each other, that it's just simply impossible for blokes who don't drive them all the time to drive them at the same work rate. And you know who's right in the mix here? M. Scaife. Rick Ritter now in car 34. Yeah, so David Bernard stepped out of that car and done an excellent job. Rick Kelly is in for car seven. Well, Steve Cameron McConville didn't have many kind words to say about you. Your take on that incident? Uh, he doesn't have many kind words to say about anyone. I mean, clearly there wasn't a car length there and he had to go onto the grass to try and pass me. And when I realised he was down the grass, I had to turn left to avoid getting involved in his accident. So, look, it was the last lap of the World Championships and we're going for the lead. I can understand that you have a wild crack like that that's more often not, not going to come off. But the 500k race on lap 15, you know, I, I, Cam's been around a bit longer than that. I think maybe he's just got ahead of himself a bit. Thanks, Steve.
Yeah, well, I beg to differ because if it was um, the last lap of the World Championship, yeah, maybe they could do that. But Steve was to the right of the road early in a 500k race, so I'm not so sure that I'd be throwing darts, Steve Owen. Yeah, he was squeezed. He was squeezed to the right of the road. If you leave racing room, you're not on the right-hand side of the road into turn one. OK, wondering what happened with Alex Davo there. And that was a real shame. I mean, he was driving like a champion. Here's his front right tyre. What's happened? They put this thing on at 500 and 750, sorry, foot-pounds. But these little dowels, these little boreholes here that hold it on, you can see that's been working. Clearly, the nut has come loose. And what it's done then, the wheel has wobbled. And you can see here, cut the wheel completely in half. Now, the guys haven't done anything wrong because this has taken 20 laps to undo. So, you know, these are magnesium alloys, alloy in here. The hub is steel, so different materials expanding and contracting at different heat rates. Very unfortunate. Absolutely. And just amazing that you can cut through like that. And I wonder when it went. It went with a bang. So Jamie Wincup slots in behind Tony Dalberto. Remember, Dalberto has not pitted. And it looks as though it's only a matter of time before car 888 gets around car 55, and that time will come now. Just behind, I reckon this is interesting, Paul Morris in front of Will Davison, and the dude didn't have too many kind words to say about Will Davison, who at Queensland Raceway was held up by young Tim Slade, and Paul Morris suggested that he wasn't going to be terribly kind when Will came near him, and that's what's going on now. <laughs> and to Tony Del Berthel as well. Yeah, that's, that, that was what the sticker was about. Yep, Paul's a tough racer, and he's got in there to turn four, and showed Tony, Tony Del Verde the long way round at Turn 4. The road just seems so much wider when Paul Morris is racing. Well, he has come out in the press and said he looked forward to getting it on with Will Davison in the Enduros. It's on right now. This is Will going down the inside. At Turn 10. like the fuse has just been lit. I reckon Will's just trying to scamper as far away as he can. <laughs> the good news for him is that he can scamper away in front at the moment. So, wind cup. Great job, man. Now, no more threats, no more threats. You've got better pace than Jamie. Let's use it. Nice and cool. Here's a very important point. No more threats. So, off he goes. Back in control of the race. Davison second, Morris third. Oh, look at this. Group two goes from Craig Baird, who's taken over car 22. Lee Holdsworth's in 33. Jonathan Webb, oh, look oh. out! Oh, 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 he's gone off. Holdsworth's gone. Alan Simonson was dicing around no, behind there in the double eight car. Uh, Lee was comfortable with the fact that he knew where the grass was. Someone give him a nudge. Just ask that question. Yeah, okay. mate, we've got you in TV. The car looks clean. You're looking all right. Uh, two cars off at turn four here as well. And that's Shane Price in the Autobahn car now. And the Greg Murphy Racing Commodore, on the wild card. Number 23 car with Sam Walter. This is the touch. Oh, yeah. He, Alan, got, a, ooh, he got a huge whack. Yeah. Alan Simonson. Simonson. Yep. That's a bit dangerous. Already some scar tissue on car 88. But now there's another whack. A good presence of mind though from Lee Holdsworth to keep it going, get through there and find the grass and get back on. So Gary Rogers, two charges are standing like this at the moment. Greg Ritter in car 34 is in 10th position. And Lee Holdsworth now shuffled right down the list to 27th after that excursion. So there's Ritter. Tim Slade down in the super cheap auto Commodore. By trade, a plasterer coming in Juros, a V8 race driver. And Slade's keeping in touch here. First year in the V8 supercar series, has done a couple in the development Fujitsu series. This is an angry pack of cars. Craig Baird in car 22, Jason Bargwan, and then the two Falcons, Dean Canto in the FPR number five car, and John McIntyre, the number four Stone Brothers car, and he and Daniel Gorn, who 
have done a great job this weekend. John races in the domestic NZV8 series. He's come here a few times before, did a solid job for Paul Crookshank's team last year here at Phillip Island, filling in for Alex Davison, who was otherwise unavailable. This is the fight just outside the top ten. Jonathan Webb at the tail of this pack. And now Ritter trying to get on by Paul Morris. That's for ninth. Those cars on different strategies. And Slade will take advantage as well and follow the team boss through. It's tightly bunched to run back down the garden straight towards Bass Strait. Keep going straight, you'll go to Tasmania. That's not what they'll do, they'll turn right. And Ritter will argue it at turn one. Craig Baird trying to sneak up the inside at turn two. Because the Valvoline Commodore is one out and one wide. Baird slips on through. And Jason Barwana coming for the right as well. And that was tight. Easy to drop offline there. But it's just simmering, this little fight. There's a bit of impatience going on. Alex Davison's joining in, he's 18th. And through all of those pit stops before, has actually got himself back onto the lead lap. That's important. Obviously, he's out of sync now with some of the other drivers. So their goal will be to stay on this lead lap for when Shane Van Gisbergen takes over. And Ritter's getting muscle. Jonathan Webb trying to grab 14th spot as well. The two Stone Brothers cars arguing over 16th and 17th. McIntyre in car four, Alex Davison in car nine. So Alex is chasing the car he regularly drives. Alan Simonson pitting in the second for the Team Vodafone Falcons, but their lead car is the leader of the race, Jamie Winker. That's for the incident involving Lee Holdsworth down at uh, turn two at nose to tail. That you saw down there earlier, a couple of laps ago. So Simonson now serves a drive through for that one. Just ducked out the ad break. Had a look around. It's like a summer's day outside. It's beautiful. A little bit dependent on which corner of the compass you look, though. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's company. in our postcode yeah. at this moment. I only looked one way. Interesting to see in this little fight here that Alex Davison has closed back up. Remember, he went down a lap earlier on, but because all of the leaders pitted, he's now back onto the lead lap in car nine. This is a vigorous brawl between Paul Morris and Craig Baird. Old buddies. And it's uh, it's been going on for a while, hasn't it? Jason Barguan has perched in there as well, so... Ooh, outside, you wide in turn one, he got away with it. That report that we intercepted when we came back from the break about the car condition, that was relayed by... Oh, another incident down here at one. Oh, thankfully, this time... Lee Holdsworth at the wheel, he's pulled up short. Sorry, guys, we're out of it. He's managed to stop it. That's exactly the same line that Cam McConville had to take unwillingly. We'll just have to see what triggered all that for Lee Holdsworth. And take a look at the damage to the front left of the Valvoline Commodore. I wonder what has triggered that. Well, this will show up. Oh, it's long oh. gone by then. And that is just extraordinary speed. Oh, my goodness. So, the front left has gone pretty much over the rise, I reckon, coming... He was on the same side of the track as Cam McConville was. High and wide on the inside, on the right-hand side. And uh, I don't know if there was any contact to trigger that, but... The end result is car 33's pretty much gone. Scary seeing cars get down there at such high speed. And one of the things that uh, 
the Confederation of Australian Motorsport and the Track Safety Committee look at very carefully in conjunction with the international body, the FIA, is that very type of incident where a car can get from one part of a track to another one unabated. So that'll be something that I'm sure will be discussed in the great detail that we've seen two cars get down there like that because you don't need much imagination to grasp what could happen. That report that we heard before about uh, the understeering Team Vodafone car came from Jamie Wincup and was relayed back through the crew, and that's what we heard Mark Dutton talking about before Barretts. Kelly, it's been an eventful day. Luckily not for you guys, up from 6th to 4th with Rick out there. Yeah, I actually caught Steve uh, in my stint there, and every time I got close to him, I started getting understeer with a loss of downforce. So we'll see how Rick goes, but we've definitely got the pace on him, and uh, we've got a good car, so we'll see how we go. You have shown a lot of promise, Todd. Do you feel it's all coming together today? Yeah, it's been a pretty exciting day out there with uh, a few people spearing off. So if we can just keep it clean and, and bring the car home, I think it's fast enough to be in the top few. So that's the plan. All right, mate, all the best. Thank you. There's all sorts of stuff on the circuit down there. Just where we picked up Rick Kelly coming around. Around about turn eight. It's a, it's, it'll be the rubber off Lee Holdsworth's yeah. car, I'd say. It's a, a huge slab of tyre that's been left smouldering there. It's just on the approach to the top of the hill. Just watch this. Uh, so we're taking a look at car 14 on oh, that. So this is unrelated. Too. Yeah, completely unrelated. This is Brad now in the car and he's back to pit lane. So let's all come off his car. There you go. The right rear is rubberless. And, and looking at the Valvoline car, uh, there's, there doesn't appear to be any other bodywork. So I think there's been a failure in that car because if there was bodywork damage that would suggest contact with another competitor, but there may well have just been some sort of front suspension fail here. All right, let's get back to business and tell you what's happening race-wise because Jamie Winkup is first. Will Davison is second. Stephen Johnson. The car in front is a lap down, mate. It's a lap down. You needed no explanation from me then about car 55. Stephen Johnson's third. He's five seconds adrift of the leader. And just Rick Kelly is fourth. Sorry, Marco. Yeah, just trying to get a bit of a handle on what's happening down here in the GRM pit. Obviously, there's a lot of panic, but you're looking at Brad Jones's car there. There was an inference in here there before that actually Holdsworth has hit Brad Jones's car. That's why the damage on the back of his. Yep, I'm getting some heads nodded around here. Okay. Piecing the puzzle together. It's not easy at this place. So, I'll just concentrate on this battle while they're tidying each other up because it's a pretty good one between Jamie and Will. The gap's only 0.2 of a second. Last time around, Will chomped in a little bit. Jamie's job wouldn't be assisted by the lap traffic in front of him. Hasn't caused too much damage, but the fact that it's in front of him is enough to just slow you down a tad. Now, the bottle entry with Andrew Thompson steps aside, and back out they go. Remember, these two guys are fighting for the championship. 187 points is the difference now between Jamie Wincup's lead in the title race and Will Davison's second. You go further back, we'll see Stephen Johnson. He's 5.5 seconds off first place. Well, uh, Lee Holdsworth, boy, that is tough. What happened? It all started with our pit stop. We were running uh, in a really good position there up in eighth, and um, we had to queue behind the, uh, the second car, so um, yeah, that set us back a fair way. We ended up going back out in last and fighting with all the, uh, the non-regulars, so um, it was tough out there, and, uh, and then someone punted me from behind. I came back on the track, and then I was fighting with the guys right down the back, and uh, I went to pass Brad into turn one, and. Um, I didn't, I didn't realise he was going to brake, so uh, I've gone to pull out and he's got on the brake, so I didn't quite get past him and clipped his wheel, his back, uh, back right wheel, and uh, it stuffed, our, stuffed our front left suspension. So that's the end of it for us, but I just feel sorry for the boys. That was a pretty wild ride, you OK? It was pretty wild, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I was just hoping that I wasn't going to drop right off the end, um, you know, before I got back on the track. But, uh, you know, just have to wait till Bathurst now. But, you know, sorry to Michael and, uh, and the rest of the team. All right, mate. All the best. Thanks for that. Soaking up a little bit of the leftovers in pit lane. A lot of sawdust being spread around this circuit, both on and off the track. Looking here at the fight for 12th spot, Alex Davison in car nine, just in front is Gregorita. Jonathan Webb looks pretty speedy at the moment too. It's one of the wild card cars, car 23. Greg Murphy racing a VE Commodore, a former Tasman team car with a couple of the Fujitsu series runners, Taz Douglas and Sam Walter behind the wheel. They've kept their noses clean. They're 26th at the moment. This is Will Davison. We're so used to seeing this angle with Garth Tander. It's actually Will's regular car numbered as number two. You can see in there the HRT family day. Next weekend, they're going to throw open the workshop to have a look at things or proceeds going to the prostate cancer cause. And he trails by nine tenths of a second. That time, wing cut was two tenths quicker. Stephen Johnson's drifting away from them. Nearly five seconds behind. Then it's Rick Kelly and Stephen Richards. Mark Scaife is sixth. Tim Slade is next. Then it's Bargwiner and Baird. Dean Canto, the number five FPR Falcon, sits in tenth. And you can see already not even at one third race distance. And the windscreen, so dirty. He's a man very, very familiar to our international viewers. Andy Prio behind the wheel for the first time of a V8 supercar in six years. What am I betting he's been off the road there somewhere? Plenty of dirt and dust falling out of this car, which is one of four from the Walker Short team. Last weekend, a winner in the World Touring Car Championship at Oscherschleben in Germany. Jumped onto a plane this week, had a quick drive in a ride day out at Call the Park. Craig Baird and Dean Canto, the works cars for Holden and Ford. The second entries, Craig Baird, so experienced, has done it all. Former full-time V8 driver. These days drives just about anything. And Dean Canto hasn't been in the seat all season. Two-time development series V8 champ, making a move over the top and Baird knows it's a long day, he will not fight. He's used to 24 hour racing, so a 500k race is a walk in the park for the Gold Coast based Kiwi. Canto teamed up with Luke Gildon. In fact, FPR are the only team to go with the same driving combinations that they used here in 2008. Quite amazing, just four of the combinations have stayed the same such as being the chop and change between the seats in 12 months. He's third and fourth, Stephen Johnson, Rick Kelly in car seven. And they're playing their way into the game very, very nicely in the LMH 500. Lap 38 of 113, Wink Cup leads. The margin is just under a second back to Will Davison. been thick and fast right throughout since we started and this little battle pack has been going for quite a while. Stephen Johnson has been behind the wheel of car 17 since lap one. Rick Kelly dived in to car number seven on lap 20. A change with his brother and now they're fighting and there's another change in the Jack Daniels crew of car 15. Well, Matty, Gary Rogers Motorsport is the garage of broken dreams and great highs all in one this weekend. Holdsworth and Caruso out. But David Bernard, it's been a remarkable run for you from eighth on the grid. You got up to third place. Good to have you back. 
Yeah, no, it's good to be back, and uh, especially with this team, Gary Rogers Motorsport, the car is great, and uh, been driving the wheels off it and made a bit of progress there. So, long, long way to go yet, but we'll see what happens. Now, in those highlights we just saw, you saw for the first time how close you got to Cam McConville, and you almost fell over. Yeah, well, the phone number for my ride car business is 1300 Skidmark, and uh, I think I need to check my undies, I'd say, they I need a new set on. Dave, uh, your first time in a Holden, it's going very well. Yeah, it is. Um, I had an association with Gary in Formula Ford in 96. He uh, sponsored me there, and it's great the first time I've had anything to do with him since. And you know, it's a marriage made in heaven so far, but like I say, it's a long way to go, and we'll just keep plugging away. Well, I can tell you're looking forward to getting back out there, mate. All the best. Yeah, bring it on. Uh, we missed him in the series. David Bernard did a spectacular job early on. By the way, that was Ben Collins jumping into the car of 15, with Nathan Pretty jumping out. So. Another of our international drivers about to make their V8 Supercar Championship debut. This one continues between Junior Johnson, who's third on the road, and Rick Kelly. The leader of the race is Jamie Wincup by 1.1 seconds over Will Davison, but they're further up the road to the tune of some six odd seconds. So there's a bit of a gap between first and second and then third and fourth. The way that the Kelly brothers started this weekend suggests that they were in good shape from the moment they rolled the car out of the transporter. They had a little bit of bad luck in the driver qualifying sessions when we split up the drivers. Todd got all the points. Rick had a bit of trouble and had to park it, but the car has looked very solid from the word go. It's interesting to hear that description before from Lee Holdsworth about the problems with his car and the contact he made with Brad Jones. We were pondering on what the problem may have been. I've got Jeff Tock with me, design engineer from Harrop Engineering. We've got great V8 supercar CAD drawings again. We'll highlight the front left-hand corner of the car, the V8 supercar, and we'll tip it up for you, and I'll show you what I reckon the problem is. It's a steering tie rod. So we'll just rotate this around, and I'll highlight the tie rod for you here. Bing, that's it there. That's the steering tie rod. Now, judging by the bend it had and the fact that the whole wheel was kind of tilted in and laying over, I'd suggest that it's probably either massively bent or broken. And I suspect that there's probably also damage on this lower control arm, which I'll also just highlight there for you there. All of that, yeah, that's it there, bing, that's the thing. So uh, that's where the damage has most likely been done in that car. And, I, and when they sit in the garage and the boys don't make an attempt to get it back out, you know that there's knock-on effects. Thanks, Jeff. That would have been 200 plus, I mean, high 200s, the speed yeah. that all that's gone on him. OK, Neil, I'm just on my way up to GRM, mate. You're guessing those two components, tie rod and control arm, mate. If you're wrong, you're buying the beer tonight. Yeah, OK, <laughs> lower. <laughs> Owen Kelly stepping in to car 67. We've missed Owen for the last couple of years in the Enduros. He's been racing for Dale Earnhardt Jr., who was a visitor here a couple of years ago in NASCAR late model stuff and plugs and plays just like a computer game. He was plugging back in the car and away he goes at endurance time. So Mark Winterbottoms getting ready to go racing in car number six. Remember they started from pole position. Stephen Richards was, well, oh, I reckon he had sore ears after the first few laps because he was box left, right and centre. But he's done a great job, Stevie Richards. He's held on to fifth position. Clearly, he was under attack. He's managed to hold on to a top five spot. Well, guys, just over here, Mark Winterbottom getting ready for his driving stint. Would you believe the change in the weather here? He's just taken off this, an ice vest, which has been keeping him cool in the heat here at Phillip Island. Now, you wouldn't believe that after the way we started the day today, that you'd need an ice vest. <laughs> I told you, it's weird weather. Weird, weird, weird. It's like a... Sunday afternoon barbecue out there at times, although it'll probably pour down within the next 10 minutes. It's all preparation for Bathurst, though, isn't it, where you get four seasons in one lap. Car 18. The Jim Beam racer, Jonathan Webb, still moving. He's in 12th spot. And here's the sprint gas entry with Scafie still doing the job on lap 42. Sixth at the moment ahead of Tim Slade behind Stevie Richards and we're looking here at the bright Ryan Lacar. And in lap 42, Carl Ryan has done his job for the day. He's done his minimum lap, so Brighty can jump aboard and go right through. And that was the reason they played that strategic card, so they now get a run all the way through. So lap 42 of 113, awful lot of racing to go. And I reckon the point there is that 
you tend to forget everybody, crew, drivers, observers, media, just how long and difficult these endurance races are. Neil, while we've been looking there at our buddy Mark's case, we should really give him a bit of a wrap because uh, talking to the team this morning, seriously, they said he's done a fantastic job. He's really he's slotted back into the car. He's contributed a lot to the team, and we all know how hard that is to do. So I say well done to him, he's running red hot. Now, I have had a look at that GRM car, mate. Everything on that corner is bent. You should be a politician, Neil. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larko. Yeah, Mike Henry from um, Sprint Gas Racing was very complimentary. He's worked with Mark before. Um, he's got massive amounts of experience and we, we know the deal. In fact, uh, I reckon it's a good opportunity to eavesdrop. So let's crank up the sound, have a look at Scafie at work and we might hold up cards at the end of it. Scaife, six on the road. Greg Murphy, we saw a quick shot. The four-time Bathurst champ getting set to take over this car. By our numbers, we'll expect to see Scaife in in about eight laps on fuel. Remember, he stopped earlier than the rest of them, so... Greg Murphy will jump back aboard. Car 51, Wink Cup leads. Will Davison's chipping away. The margin's just over six tenths. Stephen Johnson's third. He's been showing the bad sportsmanship flag for blocking Rick Kelly, who's fourth. Richards is next, that's Stephen Richards, car six. Then this man, Mark Scaife, his teammate, Jason Barguana. Car three for Sprint Gas is seventh. Then it's Tim Slade in car 39. Dean Canto in car five. And Craig Baird, the second of the Toll Holden Racing Team Commodores. And a great job too from the wild cards. David Cedars, one of the Fujitsu Series regulars, is in 17th spot, doing a wonderful job driving an X888 car that Lowndes and Winkup used to win at Bathurst in 06. And this is the view down the Gardner Strait. That time around, Scape for 37-2. A few hundred slower than Stephen Richards. But he's helped put this team and this car in a great spot. For Greg Murphy to climb aboard and run it through. Here's the leaders, Wink Up and Davison, lap 45. And they've got the pace. No one has been able to run with them in this race so far. Lowndes is on standby. Tander is on standby as well to take over car number two. Of course, one half of the reigning champ squad from last year. Scaife was his co-driver then. These two teams are the powerhouses of V8 supercars at the moment. That's Andrew Thompson, he's one lap down in the Bonolo Commodore, 22nd at the moment. So there's 21 cars on the lead lap, and the last of those is the second Vodafone car. Car 88, Alan Simonson behind the wheel, which has already actually received a drive-through penalty for that contact earlier on with car 33, Lee Holdsworth. Car 11 off the road too. It's been a dirty day for Dale Wood in his return to V8 Supercar Championship Series racing. Has not covered himself in too much glory today. But these are the guys where the fight is at. That time around, Wink Cup 36.41. Will Davison 36.39, nothing in it. Stephen Johnson 137.04. It's on car pace. These two cars are the cars to beat. Here's the Sprint Gas Congo line, Scaife and Barguana.
sixth and seventh. For these two guys, Winkup and Davison. Fighting for the championship, 200 points up for grabs today to the winners of the LNH 500. Race 17, the V8 Supercar Championship Series. Somewhere, you'd have to say in the next 10 or so laps, our leading guys, most of the field, will have to start thinking about coming in. Jamie Wincup has a 0.7 of a second lead over Will Davison. They've been battling like this for a long, long time. Stephen Johnson's third, but he's way back on the road. Rick Kelly is fourth. Stephen Richards, fifth. Jason Barguana has got past Mark Scaife in the course of that last lap. So Barguana sixth, Scaife is seventh. What about that as a result so far for sprint gas racing, given that Scaife started in 21st and Barguana started 15th? Some pressure battle on between these two fellas in the lead now when it's under a second after already a lot of racing. One thing that we talked up but hasn't really been delivered is weather. But remember this time last year, an intense battle between, here we go, a little issue here, is it, between the sprint gas races of Barguana and Scaife swapping spots, and uh, Mark leaves room for Jace. There he goes. Uh, remember last year's race when we had the rain and then it dried up at the end and uh, the then number two toll car just went like a rocket. It's all of a sudden the condition, track condition changed and it, it, it was quick. Scaife lost a couple of other spots here. Slade and Canto sneak on through. He's dropped that back down to ninth now, just ahead of uh, Baird. So maybe he's just lost a little bit of tyre condition. I, we, when we last ran with him, he was in the 36s, but he's now down in the 37s or beyond. Oh, look at this. Zinger replay. Stephen Richards letting it hang out a little bit. Oh, drama here for Bagwana. And uh, this will be oil on the road. There was a problem yesterday for one of the super mate, cheap cars. Mate, you have to go straight into the garage, mate. You have to go straight into the garage. Watch for the boys, I'll direct you. It was the Russell Ingle Tim Slade so car. Oil and, shit out of the back of it, mate. and it looked like an engine failure yesterday, Copy but it turned that, out to be we'll an oil look. line. Stay in the car. And that's the deal. So they look under there, find out what the deal is. If it's a terminal problem, the boys are out. But sometimes it can be the simpler things. Him guys, push him. Very little steering lock available on a V8 supercar because of the amount of caster and negative camber. And uh, that's where it went. That's where it let go right there, down at turn 10. So just a lap before he was passing his teammate, a lap later he's heading on into pit lane. Just uh, put my finger in this and have a little sniff, mate. That looks and smells awfully like power steering oil to me. Thank you, Laka. I was wondering what you, what you were talking about. <laughs> we couldn't see you there. We thought you'd gone up to grab some hot chips or something. Yeah, there's any range of things that that could be. <laughs> Jonathan Webb in car 18 here and Alex Davison in car 9. And that's Owen Kelly in the mix as well, but he is a lap down in 23rd. So good fight back for Alex Davison. And the Irwin SP Tools racing entry. Finding it a bit difficult here. It's a good little move there from Owen, who's been racing NASCAR late models in the US. He's come back to Australia. It's been a tough season for him over there. Want very limited budget driving for Dale Earnhardt Jr. A great opportunity. Stephen Richards is now pitting in the Ford Performance Racing car, and so you'll see Mark Winterbottom get in. Alex Davison just uh, slip sliding away in that battle with Owen Kelly. Here we are on board. This is Richo, there's Mark. Nice and easy into the box. Critical to pull up right on the mark. Richo's coupling up. 
using a driver assisted, in fact, in that team. So helping Mark Winterbottom with his belts. Clear exit out, Frosty. You're going to have a clear exit out. You get that, mate? You get that? Just making sure that the radio's hooked up. The fuel okay, suit's hooked up. Cold, cold tyres, brake balance to 14. And reset fuel, please. Reset fuel. And CPS light, yellow light on. And he just did the CPS light. And so there's the smouldering Jason Bard light on the deal. Should we put... Like go to the test now because uh, we could go up there and do an oil analysis and actually see whether it is power steering fluid and if it's not, it might, be, might, might be one all. <laughs> Don't drag us into your betting game. <laughs> You're on your own. It's called guessing game, that's what it's called. <laughs> A one second lead effectively for Jamie Wincup now over Will Davison. So Ford Performance Racing have shown their hand. Mark Scaife comes in. After sliding down a couple of spots. But still a terrific job to get it up from 21st up into... Well, he was 7th when he entered pit lane. And that should be enough for Scafie for the day. Greg Murphy standing by. Just think of how many times these guys have done this. So much endurance expertise. By nine Bathurst victories. So the five time series champion steps out. Can you hear me, After returning to V8 supercars and doing a great job. This is one of the team co owners there, it's Tim Miles, who said well done to Scafi and look at this look at these two look at him go, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's a bit better <laughs> so does he get voted out this week yeah hang on from personal experience I can tell you that tens don't mean anything <laughs> Scafi we'll just say mate seriously really good job you must be happy with that you're punching out the numbers top 10 stuff really good yeah look the car was actually quite good in the middle of the race there but I just caught myself right near the end like I wanted to leave the brake bias where it was and when Bargs passed me, I just caught some oil down into, into Honda and I ran, uh, you know, I ran a little bit wide. So it was one of those ones where I sort of thought probably at the last part I should have done a little bit better job. But overall, I was, I was happy with the drive. It was good. Good to get into it. It was great. Great to see you smile. Thanks, mate. Thank you. He can come back to work now, can't he? <laughs> Bargs, can I just grab you for a minute there, mate? Just tell us a little bit about that. Was that power steering we saw there, power steering oil? Yeah, it's had a bit of vibration from lap one, Mark said, so... Um... Oh, I'm shattered. <laughs> that car was going so well, we finally tuned it up to be a really good race car. And at one stage there, yeah, Pete said we're one of the fastest cars out in the circuit. So, yeah, you know. Your blokes are certainly looking good for Bathurst. See if we can get out there again and get some points. Now, I was really going to try hard to find uh, Scafie's Mrs. Tony, see so if she's giving him a six or a nine. I've got a fair idea what it'll be. You're on your own there, pal. Well, Jason she... Barguano mentioned a good point. I mean, they were rocketing up the list. Started 15th, him and Mark Noski paired together for this race. And, you know, the frustration, it, it's a sort of happy-go-lucky garage at the moment because all of us clowns are hanging around there, but the frustration was pretty clear. You know when you've got a good car and, and a good crack at it. Now the single sprint gas job is left up to Greg Murphy, who's back in the car. He slots in behind Stephen Johnson on the road. who has been out there pushing away since the opening of this game. So he's in third place. Jamie Winkup holding down the lead from Will Davison. Just check out as he goes across the control line. So 10 seconds is the difference between Jamie Winkup in first and Stephen Johnson in third. Jamie Winkup continuing to lead. Lap 52. This car should be good for about another six laps before it needs to head to pit lane for fuel. And for Craig Lowndes to leap aboard. Alex Davison in pit lane in car number nine. It's been a recovery job, a great job from Alex after that punctured tyre. Shane Van Gisbergen will take over. This is Johnson in third. Greg Murphy out on the track, is 21st. A lap down on the Jim Beam Falcon. And trying to make back some ground. Rick Kelly just in behind. Car seven. Tim Slade is fifth. Dean Canto is next. Then it's Craig Baird. Murphy again having a look. 
and Johnson plays it smart, gives him room. But it lets Rick Kelly close in on the back. This is car nine, the Stone Brothers Falcon. We've only just picked it up late in the piece there, so interesting to see whether Alex has stayed on board or Shane Van Gisbergen has been plugged into car number nine. So Junior started from fifth when he came in. They were effectively third. Well, they were third. Look at the concentration. This is where teamwork comes into play. Fueled up, driver change, ready to go. And with the flow of fuel and the time it takes to put a full tank in, there's no need to rush that driver change. It's nice to have it done in 14 or 15 seconds, but there's no absolute need. As the no leader's problem. now peeling. We're going to do a driver change, a driver change. So loosen your belt, make sure it's in neutral. There's a car in the pit lane as we speak. Drive through the Autobahn pit. That's a straight down to business call, that one. Look at that little extra margin you get when you're the following car and you dive up in under there, under brakes. So Garth Tander goes in. Lots of people treating this race from the end backwards, a reverse window race in terms of strategy. Turn the hat. Turn the tap. Turn the tap. No, Third's eye view of the change at Team Vodafone. Wing cup out, Lowndes in. Back down to Toll Holden Racing Team. They're clear and ready to go. He's got to trundle all the way up the other end of pit lane and remember to see what car Triple Eight's doing. Kelly's are in this as well. Car seven. That's Tander coming. That's Lowndes going. Tiny advantage to Team Vodafone. A good advantage in the end. And he's managed to sneak away and get a little bit of traffic in between him. There's Will Davison. He looks in pretty good nick. Paul Dumbrell driving for the Toll Holden Racing Team for this race and for the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Those two went to school together, would you believe? And now they're teammates for the Works Holden team. Whenever you really see that. Good job too for Jack Daniels Racing. They're right in the mix. Well, you look pretty cool, calm and collected. What a great stint from you. Really consistent. How did you feel out there? Um, yeah, it felt good. It was, um, car's great. It's, um, you know, we struggled a bit this weekend, but uh, we've really made good inroads. And uh, that was a great battle with Jamie. It was really impressive stuff. Absolutely nothing between us for 54 laps, and it was really enjoyable. Obviously, quite low grip as the tyres go away, and uh, there's nothing between those two cars. So um, I'm happy with the job I've done, and uh, GT's the man. So let's see how we go. You told me earlier that you were concerned that the car wasn't looking after the tyres as much as you would have liked. How was it in that stint? Uh, it was. It was good. It was good, and that's 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 the be all and end all of your race here at Phillip Island, and it hasn't been that great on the tyres. But uh, you know, we were as as good as absolutely anyone then. We we were able to drop the guys behind and uh, run with the Triple Eight car. So, um, you know, it's obviously hard work out there. When the tyres go off around here, <laughs> you're just in four-wheel uh, slides everywhere, and uh, um, it's 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 pretty easy to make a mistake. But uh, I hung on to it, had a few moments. I'm happy, and um, we'll see how we go. Have a break, relax. Good job. Yep, you bet. Thank you. Cheers. So we were on board there a moment ago, looking at Tim Slade at the helm of the 39 car. Jamie Wincup also looked to be in pretty good condition after a fairly lengthy stint. Black flag for car number 21. So a sailor. I think uh, pit lane speeding infringement for him, Barretts. Well, Stephen Richards back in the garage here, Steve. Great stint. Well done. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, car's going good. good a uh, little bit of a tap with one of the Jack Daniels cars. That, that took us off a bit, but going all right. Now, tell us about the physical side of getting into endurance mode because it is exhausting. You come back in, of course, you're dripping with sweat. And in Men's Health magazine this, this week, you can actually read a bit more about it. But how hard is it for you guys? Oh, look, it is. I mean, the, the obvious thing is the amount of time we spend in the car. You know, and our, our 
12, 15 stint then, and the, the in-cart temperatures are sort of up around 50 degrees C. So the amount of concentration required to, to keep driving well, not make a mistake, you have to be physically fit. And, you know, FPR, thankfully for us, every year uh, give us a training camp to take on over the Christmas period, and that makes us train throughout the year, so throughout the off-season, and that's, um, that's good. And, Richard, what sort of things do you do? Oh, look, lots. Of, you know, you have to do a, a, a bit of strength training because in the car, basically, every time you change gear, you're pulling 15 kilos of load. Every time you jump on the brake, you're generating 100 kilos of force at, at your legs. So people don't realise the amount of the, the rigours inside the car and the, and the physical side to, to what we do driving. And then, you know, we're not. it's not like a, a, a football team where, where at any one part of the game, when the ball's on one part of the, one part of the field, the guys can have a bit of a rest. We've got to actually concentrate the whole time. And, you know, training, go, going cycling, running and all that sort of thing keeps you, keeps you sharp. And I'm going to go back and read my men's health magazine again and just copy your training regime. Good man. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Good man. Andy Prio in car 24 in the pits, fellow international. Alan Simon's in there as well. Looks like the drink bottle popped a leak there as well. Yeah. It's done a good solid job. A lot more comfortable in the car. And so too of these guys. The all Kiwi combo. Johnny McIntyre and Daniel Gorn have really gone under the radar. There's the Dane, Alan Simonson, who spends more time on planes than anywhere else because he flies here, there and everywhere doing sports car racing in a variety of championships. And James Thompson, the two-time British Touring Car Champ, who drives a Lada in the World Touring Car Championship. Brave man gets his first big crack at V8 Supercars. Clear. Dean Canto and Craig Baird also in. OK, four cold tyres, mate, four cold tyres. Watch out, exiting the pit. Great fire to the rear. I want... So that will leave... Greg Britter. Oh, he's in as well. Everyone's he's coming in. OK. So it'll be back to corrected order. That's Luke Yildon taking over car five. So the tear off coming away from the windscreen there. Mark Beretta detailed that earlier in the day. Here's Bernard. So Lowndes goes back to the lead as these guys take their pit stop. Looks like HRT pretty much the only ones who are not using the driver assistant. Everybody else has decided to use that ninth extra crew member. It's so hard when you climb out of the car because you're so hot and you've got gloves on, so you've either got to commit to getting the gloves off, with, which takes time, or you fumble with your gloves on. I mean, really, in the end, if there's a guy standing there, that's his designated job, Aaron. It's so much easier. His heart rate's down. He can concentrate. Help the bloke get in. Close, close, close. Lead. Tanner and Lowndes. Tanner's right up the inside of Lowndes at the moment. Mark Winterbottoms in third. Look at all the junk over the windscreen of car number two. So just to reconfirm, this is a manoeuvre for the lead. And we're pretty much bang on the halfway mark now. And if you consider the margin that Team Vodafone opened up in the pit stop, it didn't look too bad when they were trundling along at 40Ks, but once the lead car you know, flicks the limiter off and bolts and you see the true gap. It was, it was a fairly decent margin, so this has been a genuine gain is what I'm trying to say for Garth. Well, Leanne, a great job out there. You look like you're physically spent. How was it? Yeah, it was pretty tough at the end there. It was getting quite greasy as the tyres got hot and there was just debris and all sorts of crap on the track. So I was just doing my best to just keep consistent times and keep the car in one piece and bring it in for David. David out there at the moment. Just show us your seat insert. This is the difference in size between yourself and David getting in the car. Yeah, that's right. We're uh, almost a foot difference in height. So it's um, he's really squashed up and I have to have this big insert so that we can actually all reach the pedals and the steering wheel. But it's still, it's not 100% comfortable for either of us, but we'll make do. Now at the moment, you've managed to avoid your husband, Garth, out on the track at the same time, but not for long. Yeah, I think, from what I hear, I think he might be finishing the race. I'm not sure. We'll probably be out of the track at the same time at the end because um, I'm due to get back in to finish um, the race as well. So, yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> we look forward to it. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks. Gee, you would have to wonder about that timing, wouldn't you, Leanne, coming in as Garth goes out. Um, similar thing down here with Shane Van Gisberg and, and uh, Alex David. They use a similar seat insert. And what they do, it's, it's a polystyrene-type two-pack apparatus. And what you do is you pour it into a garbage bag and put it in the seat. There you go. And Alex would have to sit there for probably half an hour while it dries, and they pull it out 
and trim it out, but it does because you're not allowed to have sliders on your seat to go fore and aft like you used to be. So this is how they get around that little dilemma. And that's how we used to do it in the open wheelers, Larko, and uh, one or two suits get lost along the way, and there's more than one or two dud seats have been poured over the years <laughs> that nearly bolted you, pushed you straight up out of the car. Too much catalyst. Gartan is um, certainly not impatient at the moment, but I think he knows he's within zone to have a crack here at Craig Lowndes, should Lowndes falter somewhere around the way, and car 25 has had a big off. The Fujitsu racer with Jason Bright behind the wheel. Pedal straight to the floor. Now, Garth made up about three seconds in four laps when he first came out. So his car was better on the full fuel load and on the cool tyres. But it looks like it's just settled down a bit now. Lounge last lap, 36 even, 36-1 for Tanda. Watch this. Not another one at turn one. Zinger replay, it is another one at turn one. Actually, you can see something. If we look at that again in replay, there's, I reckon there's been a fluid loss or something, or there's some drama in the front left corner. There were sparks there. There could be some rocks involved in that as well. But something in the front left corner of Jason's car. So it, it actually had the rears locked going into one. Well, Jamie Wincap, uh, great start off the line there, and it really paid off. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, great start. Very similar to Richo. Um, he was a bit conservative, and I went around to the outside. But amazing how different the two cars are. My car's really quick in the slow, and then Wills is really quick in the fast. And on, on, on heavy tanks, um, they've got really good speed, but then ours gets better. So if Lounsey can hold Garth out here for a little bit, um, he, should, he should be able to get a bit of a breath halfway through the stint. Will was saying earlier on that he and you had a fantastic battle for 54 laps. Yeah, it's, it's hard. The, the TV doesn't really justify, you know. We're, we're on the limit, you know, every, you know, every corner, every lap. And so I made a few little mistakes. He made a few mistakes, but uh, we managed to keep it on. And really, really happy with my stand now. I'm just going to cheer Lounsey along. Jamie, you guys are the endurance race experts. How are you feeling about this so far? <laughs> Don't curse me. Uh, so far, so good. Long way to go, though. We're, uh, we're not taking any for granted. Car mechanically is pristine. Um, we're just trying to make sure we've got a good car right at the end, and so far, so good. All right, good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Bradley Jones is trying to make sure that he can find the race line he again. Say something about the brake by. Just reminding you to think about it. Oh, yeah, right. 34 and 10. David Bernard and Steve Owen. Steve Owen got himself loose, loose on the inside of that track and now David Bernard doesn't want any part of that. He'll try and scoot through and get clear and does. So Bernard now in position 13. So the, the worry was uh, what was going on there with Jason Bright's car. Here's the replay. Look carefully in the centre of the front left wheel. And look at the way it's turning there. It's actually turning itself. And I reckon I saw sparks. Or, yeah, right there, there was a spark, something ignited. So there's been some kind of a fail. Look at that, the brake caliper. Something weird has gone on there. So, yeah, maybe, I don't know. There's a hundred different explanations. And Larko will pound me if I don't get the right one. This uh, will explain what happened to Bradley Jones. It's the tyre, right rear tyre off it, is it or not? No, it's I just... I think it's uh, still there. He's uh, straight ahead. Yeah. Max uh, Wilson was supposed to come out and drive this car from Brazil, but his stock car commitments meant that he wasn't able to, so Brad's behind the wheel for the Enduro. To make the most of the LH 500, Gone past the halfway mark. Craig Louds has a 0.9 of a second advantage over Garth Tanner. Mark Winterbottom is third, Todd Kelly fourth. James Courtney is fifth. The ticker along the bottom of your screen will indicate the position of your favourite driver as we go on board with GT. The forecast from Jamie Wincup that all Craig needs is a couple of laps for things to ease a little bit's proven right. So Garth had the big attack when they first went out together on heavy fuel load cold tyres. That margin, as you can see, is just opened up by a couple of car lengths. Interesting that they just put another front left wheel on Jason Bright's. Don't drive on the front side of the final turn. Turn in early. Don't drive by qualifying. Check right front. There you go. That was uh, a shot in the pit lane of Dave Stewart from Stone Brothers Racing, who's managing the Jason Bright car, and he was in a conversation. And I suspect it is go out there and, and tell me what you feel. But worries me when I see a flash coming from the front left corner of a car, then some sort of a fader, and then 
You know, they've had a quick look, sent it back out. So there's a question mark over him, even though he's back out there. It's a change. James Courtney getting by on the Kelly Commodore for fourth spot. Todd in car seven. Andrew Thompson is still in six, but that car, the Bottolo Commodore, has only pitted once, so it's really not an absolute factor. It's just been so remarkable that so much sunshine has been popping through the clouds here. Every time you think that there could be rain on the way, we get a nice dose of spring sunshine as Gartander comes barreling down towards turn 10 just to make sure he didn't get caught up in the traffic. It was worth the risk to put the foot down a little bit and make sure that he hangs on to Gartander. We're talking temperatures, Matty. The Dunlop have just sent me some information. 18 degrees air, 20 degrees track temperature. So it's a bit up on the forecast. Good job, mate. Still P2 on the road. P2 on the road. That radio message from Matty Nilsson before to Garth, don't drive it like a qualifying car. He wants to protect that front right tyre here, so clearly it's uh, Garth going through on Ben Collins here with lots of space, but uh, they must be a little bit concerned of uh, knocking around the tyres around here, the loaded, uh, the loaded side tyre, which in this case is down the right-hand side, and in particular the front. OK, we noticed the real increase in performance in the FPR cars, Mark Witterbottom's car, this weekend. And all credit to him, because it is very hard to develop a car when you're in the middle of the racing season. Let me show you some of the things they've been working on. Brake cooling. This is the ducting at the front of the car. I mean, different shapes, designs, largely influenced. Not only the cooling of the brakes, but as Neil talks about a lot, the aero efficiency at the front of the car. Shock absorbers. Obviously, these aren't just there for absorbing bumps. They control the way the whole car works in its transient situation. So there you are. There's a shock absorber. They've put a whole new specification. It's really the bits inside there that we can't see that they're talking about. Whole new set of that. And this one, the most complicated one, this is your front upright. This is where your front wheel is held on. And all these points around here, lower and bottom, uh, sorry, top and bottom control arm, steering, brakes, everything bolts to this. So all your geometry really works around where things hang off here and how it all works. So they've done some, some development there. And you can see when you look at Mark Winterbottom driving that car now, how that car's working, this is all part of it. So these brakes are doing a really good job. Larko's trying to earn some brownie points because in an article recently he wrote FPR off as a possibility in the endurance races. So he's in there going flat out at the moment trying to get back on the Christmas card list from Mark Roworth there and also from Tim Edwards. Keep going, Larko. Got a bit more work to do. <laughs> yeah, it was like the weather here, Larko. You knew that was going to come some stage through during the day. Uncle Neil didn't miss that time. <laughs> A little bit of traffic here for uh, Mark Winterbottom. He is six seconds adrift of the leader. Owen Kelly back in the garage and they're under the bonnet. It's a lonely old place. When you're in that garage and the rest of the world's going screaming by, just seems like a different planet for those guys. Now, Frosty's got himself out of that traffic. Now he can uh, start to take aim. In there is car 15. The Jack Daniels entry of Ben Collins. Car 23, Taz Douglas. And also Daniel Gaunt. First time we've seen Daniel Gordon in the Champ Series. Had a couple of starts last year in the Team Kiwi car. Murphy and Van Gisberg and a couple of Kiwis getting stuck into it. So the Giz has got past him there on the course of this lap. So Shane Van Gisberg is now 10th and Murph drops back to 11th. You guys just down at Super Cheap Auto. Owen Kelly reporting a big misfire in car number 67. So the mice are getting to the machinery. There's the other super cheap auto car, Tim Slade. Remember Russell Ingle pairing with Tim for this race, and he's just ahead of Craig Baird. Lap times I want to focus on here. Lowndes 36 even, Tander a 36.6, Winterbottom a 36.8, Courtney a 135.9, but James is 
14 seconds away from the lead of the motor race. And then Todd Kelly at 37.4. So the fastest guy of the top four at the moment is James Courtney in the Jim Beam Racing Ford. So a fair margin to make. But of those four cars, the consistent best performance seems to continue to be the Team Vodafone car. Craig Baird just getting down the inside. Not quite on Tim Slade. Thought for all money he had the job done. I think he thought that too. He'll have another go. We saw Craig at the start of the year stand in the GT Championship in a Mosler. Not doing that anymore, but it doesn't really matter what he drives. When he jumps in to the works Commodores, he's so, so strong. Well, Paul Morris, do we know what's up with your car? Pretty sure it's an exhaust mount. It started happening when I was driving. I could hear it rattling, and then uh, Owen picked it up, and it's getting quite bad, vibrating through the whole car. No, so, uh, I would hate it to come off and cut a tyre down around here or something. It would be devastating. So we'll fix it up, make it short safe, and send it back out. I mate, look forward to seeing you back out there. OK, thanks. Paul Morris there in charge of Super Cheap Auto Racing. Once again, just uh, looking at pace, Courtney again, the fastest of the top four at 135.8, whereas Triple Eight Car Lounge at 36.7. So uh, James got a ton of pace at the moment. Uh, Todd Kelly's car, now there's a car been going past us and it's been uh, backfiring and popping and banging and I thought it was somebody having trouble getting into sixth gear. But the last lap time then for Todd was a 146 and so it's making a terrible sound. They had some electronic gremlins earlier in the year with this car. Let's have a listen. It's intermittent, but it's definitely doing it on the front straight and it's something to do with the shifting from fifth to sixth. Cost him some 10 yeah. seconds so, in his last lap. Yeah, they've had this before. Well, maybe not specific. Uh -oh. oh, here we go. Uh, this is very disappointing because the brother duo, very, very strong. I think what Todd did on the previous lap, when you saw him coming out of turn four, is potentially shut the whole car down, switch the master off, and then reboot effectively the car, like a computer, like when you get a computer glitch at home. But. Um, Clearly, you don't want that sort of stuff going on. And if, you, if you've got to idle the engine or even shut it down, your power steering system's shut down too, and the whole thing's bad. It hasn't but, recovered any pace, though, because the first sector was a 30.2. It's almost a second and a half slower in that short part. Yeah, they've, they've, they've clearly got a drama. And I can't even recall the event. It might have been Darwin, I think, who was standing there on the Friday around the back of the circuit, and they, they had a similar thing happening. And it's, it's almost like you, you hear the car not coming out of gear or, or like you'd switch the pit lane speed limit on, but a, but a very harsh um, cut to the engine note. There's something weird happening in the left rear corner of this car here too. Hey, Matt. James Courtney there in car 17. Remember there was contact between 33 Holdsworth and Jones uh, that could be contributing to whatever the damage is under that car from earlier in the day. Courtney and Winterbottom continue to be the fastest of the leading group. And uh, just as you were speaking then, Matty, Todd went past, and once again it was in the shift between fifth and sixth that was causing uh, Todd the drummer, and it's so raspy. We might try and catch it at some stage as it goes past. It's almost right in front of our commentary box. Watching Ben Collins here, who's been most accommodating for the faster guys coming on through. He's 19th at the moment. Whoa. He better not do that for too much longer. He was racing with Daniel Gaunt and David Wall, the GT Championship leader who's got through. But Ben's approached this really, really well. He's got experience in all sorts of cars, open wheelers, sports cars. He's done Le Mans. He's done it all. But this is just something completely different. In fact, he was a stunt driver. Remember that James Bond film, Quantum of, Quantum of Solace? He was the guy doing all the, the specky driving in that one. Down here with uh, Rico, mate. Uh, Rick, you look almost as confused as what we are. What's actually happening out there? I think one of the belts in the pit stops just grabbed him a bit, so it's a bit uncomfortable. He's just trying to slow down, wriggle the belt right, and uh, see how we go. So, always an endurance race to go up and down. Unfortunately, we went up before, we're going down now. Hopefully, we can go back up again. Keep your head up, mate. 
Guys, looks like uh, Well Racing might be able to get Brad Jones going again. They've had to change a diff over the course of the weekend. Brad reported smelling oil. They think the diff is overheating, but they may just have fixed it. Looks like they'll get him going. He's back into it. Hey, Brad, if you get the rear bar, if you get the rear bar, just find that deep clockwise one turn, clockwise one turn. That's uh, Matt Boniface talking to Brad Jones, talking about the rear anti-roll bar control in the car. That was Rick's explanation there. Well, the mystery oh. continues at yeah. Jack Daniels Racing. Furrowed brow, Mr. Crompton. Oh. Professor, you buying it? No, not no, at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, it's, uh, it's, got, it's certainly got an issue, Marco. Neil, um, that's why you're much better off listening to me than you, mate, when you're talking about, you know, engine limiters, missed gear cuts, and it's a seatbelt. <laughs> Cracking stuff, mate. <laughs> to get the boys from Jack Daniels to just wander 100 <laughs> yards down the road and have a listen to the fact that for about 200 metres past us, it doesn't run. Costly, it's a, it's a costly seatbelt. <laughs> Costing 11 seconds for one lap. All righty, Craig Louds is the race leader. You're watching car 39 of Tim Slade. Back end of the top 10. I'll run you through the 10 to get to these guys. Louds, Tanner, one and two. Then Winterbottom and Courtney. Warren Luff, car 18. Then Todd Kelly in sixth, Luke Yulden in seventh, Craig Baird in eighth, then these guys, Tim Slade and Shane Van Gisbergen. Behind them, Greg Murphy. Van Gisbergen down the inside, he gets him this time. Great job from Tim Slade. He's been given a chance, a big opportunity, and he stepped up, done a very, very solid job. Either way, it was gonna be a tough weekend for Tim. He was either gonna drive with his team boss, Paul Morris, or he was gonna end up with, with Russell Ingle. Owen Kelly. So he was going to be paired up with somebody of experience, if not somebody paying the bills. The bloke called the Enforcer and the bloke called the Dirty Dangerous Dude. The, which one? Yeah, well, he's holding his own, and that's the confidence that you get out of the experience that you've got from being in the series since the start of the year. And coming off a good result at Queensland Raceway as well. Finished in the top 10 in the Saturday race there. Did a really good job with the sprint tie, but the day's done for Brad Jones Racing. The BOC car had its issue earlier, and Brad and Andrew Jones just haven't really got into this race at all. They've spent more time in the lane than just about anybody. So nearly a third of the field have had some form of issue so far in the 70 laps run. We've been talking a little bit about um, reliability issues, which have crept in a bit this year. That Cars being engineered to a to a standard now, uh, you know, based on weight, weight distribution, speed, and uh, really trying to stretch the maximum out of them in lots of areas. And I think, you know, in some cases they've just got to the fragile point. Very fancy diff housings in the cars now. Very expensive diff housings in the car. Lounge has uh, stretched his lead a little over Garth Gar Tander. He's now taken it out towards two seconds. And that was exactly what Jamie Wincup had predicted. The lighter the 888 car would get, the easier it would be to handle and the faster it would go. And it's played out that way against car number two. So there's the uh, whole dip housing out of the car, so it looks like they're going to replace that whole unit. On board here with Craig Lowndes, race leader. 1.5 second margin over Garth Panda. Ooh, hear the rear brakes then, turn 10. Short shifting to third gear, not using all of the available revs to try and stop the car from sliding. Oh, look at the amount of sliding there at the final turn. One point three to go, 42 to go. Okay. Craig really had to catch that fourth gear then. Left-hander onto the straight, couple of hundred kilometres an hour and he was sliding massively. That last lap, Tanda made up 0.4 of a second, so the worm's turning in Garth's favour now. Here it is again from outside, look at that. 
So I thought my eyes were deceiving me because I don't normally expect to see somebody with that amount of opposite lock at the last corner. But uh, the outside shot verified it. Sometimes when um, you're in a rhythm here, the best edge is gone from your tyres. You, you just try and carry that extra little whisker of speed. You, sometimes you do need a tiny bit of brake there just before you get to the last corner. You tip it in a few kilometres an hour too quick and you pay heavily for it. He'll probably just adjust the, his timing and style a little bit this lap. Fourth gear, top of the hill. It's a little blind brow there where you kind of have to peer up over the steering wheel then back down to second gear in at turn 10. New sawtooth profile on the curbing there rattles the fillings out of your head, third gear. Now we're coming back up to the last corner. Just watch the hands again. He just turned it in just a whisker slower this time, total stability. So he learnt from what happened last time. One more two to go after an air jump and everything top. Just try and work out what I need, to be honest. But I understand that's also got this oversteer, so got a bit of both, got no gear cut, it's all going on. <laughs> when I talk double dutch and talk about the shift cut in the car, in a V8 supercar you don't need to normally use the clutch, you can just leave your foot flat on the throttle pull the gear lever and there's a little micro switch in the actual gear lever itself and when you activate the lever it just takes the spark away from the engine for a tiny moment therefore cuts the spark therefore the shift cut and it takes the strain out of the transmission it allows you to make the shift from one gear to another. And Craig's, Craig's not getting the benefit of that uh, shift cut mechanism at the moment because it's failed for whatever reason so uh, he's having to shift in the conventional manner which is just Gently lift the throttle a tiny bit, use a little bit of the clutch pedal, and it just means that you're interrupting the drive for longer to the rear wheels. This is Tim Slade, position 11. You might recall that little incident earlier between Brad Jones and Lee Holdsworth. Well, this is the whole diff housing out of the back of Brad Jones's car. The boys did a great job of our racing, changed it in about 20 laps. You can see down in here, though, a little bit of a crease. Kim Jones doesn't miss an opportunity to wow sticker there. Put a little crease in here so the, the rear end was towing in, the right rear was towing in. Now, Neil, you quite rightly said you just got to wonder. I mean, all these things now are getting made. I mean, beautiful engineering, but gee, they're lightweight. I mean, the materials in this, you're talking a little over one mil, all of this sort of stuff here. Look at some of the quality of engineering where your trailing arms bolt on here, but they really don't cop much of a whack anymore. And I don't know if that's the right way to go for the future, you know? Certainly, I've seen the cost of some of them, and there's, there's some very elaborate diff housing mechanisms up and down the pit lane, and uh, I've seen the paperwork that comes with them, and it's got lots of zeros on it. This has been a really good job from one of the wild card runners, Andrew Fisher, V8 supercar debut in the main game. Did a couple of races in the Fujitsu series last year. He's a regular in the Ute series. He can't bring that driver here. He and David Cedars are up to 18. This is a car they've leased from Triple Eight. It's a Bathurst winner from 06 with Lowndes and Wing Cup. Just giving some room there to Daniel Gaunt, but they've approached this race really fine. They've got out of the way of the big boys. They're sticking to their game plan, and they're in the mid-pack. They've got a lot of big names who haven't lasted. It's a good attitude to take into a big race. And as we always say, when we come to the 500, it's head down. Pressure doubles, but they're also thinking about three or four weeks down the track as we head off to Bathurst. This is David Wall driving with Leanne Tander. He leads the Australian GT Championship actually in a Porsche. He'll do a double duty at Mount Panorama with the GT cars racing as a support to the V8 supercars. Daniel Gorn, too, joining in this weekend. He's a regular from the Fujitsu series, so he runs an ex Stone Brothers car there, so he'll also be doing both categories at Bathurst. Full lap of the front left-hand corner of Craig Lowndes car here and you can ride with him and have a look at the amount of tyre distortion for the Dunlop control tyre and the loads that run through the car. Quite amazing. Okay. Look at that. The amount of cra 
concussion distortion that massive load the mid corner at turn one it's over 200 kilometers an hour through there about three and the way it leads into the right hander at four is that the car's very unweighted it's extremely easy to lock a brake on the way in there this is Siberia Craig was back to second he had to use a bit of opposite lock to catch the slide hay shed bumps distortion car was pretty neutral. Front left on holidays over the top of the hill. Slowest corner on the track, turn 10. Those little corrections, those little mini corrections are just catching a slide. And again, he's come onto the straight better that time. So, Two seconds to Tanner, 37 left to go. That brake line still cool. OK. Just got a little breather again. I, I can't believe the way that tyre distorts down there at Turn 1. Um, he's got a little breather again over, over Garth just in the last couple of laps. Yeah, it's to back out towards two seconds. Guys, very interesting twist down here at Super Cheap Auto with the team that probably has the biggest age gap difference between drivers. Tim Slade, one of the younger drivers. Russell Engel, perhaps one of the older. Tim Slade has called up and said, hey guys, I'm a bit exhausted actually. I've just about done all I can do. Can you bring me in? It's going to be up to Russell, the old fella, to step in and bring it home. Go the old boys. <laughs> I wonder what the quoted age that Russell gave Barretts was though. 21. <laughs> So those four red boxes indicate the reason why Craig Lowndes has managed to push that gap back out a little bit over Garth Tanner, but it's a, oh, give a correction there. It's a seesawing game, this one, between car triple eight and car two. Remember, there is a little bit of traffic involved in all of this as well. They're both pretty much posting identical times, and car five has gone off Luke Yulden down at turn four, the Orcon Steel entry. Let us know if there's any damage, mate. Let us know. He's pretty covered in that department. So 136.7 that lap around for Craig Lowndes, a 136.51 for Garth Tanner, Zinger replay. Shows Yulden locking it up, going straight ahead. Tom Kelly behind him gets a face full of smoke and darts off to the right. Oh, guys, Russell Engel is the king of innovation. You see all this gaffer tape he's put around the shoulder here. His hands device has been clipping as he gets into the car and moving around. So to try and keep it in position, they've just gaffered it down. That is smart thinking, an older mind. <laughs> is he awake, Brett? He's in the zone. Oh, you're looking at the defending 500 champion, GT, put in a terrific drive in 2008. Partnered with Mark Scaife back then. This time he's in with Will Davison and he's taking it right up to Craig Lowndes in the fight for first place. And he's going for three in a row at Phillip Island. Remember, he won the round when we had rounds to win his championship in 2007. Different format last year. He got home in the 500. So going for three in a row, but they've got to be. Oh. Can you believe the conditions that they've had? I guarantee you that up and down pit lane, they're still looking at the skies. And now we're back live with Craig Lowndes on lap 80 of 113 in car 888, a 1.7 second lead over Garth Tander. Winterbottom is third. 
James Courtney is fourth. Warren Luff, the other Jim Beam racer, is fifth. They've played their way right into this racing car 18 with that second Luff and Webb car. Just reference to that remark from Mark Beretta earlier about uh, Tim Slade feeling as though he's had enough. He's done a lot of laps. Russell got out of the car oh, back on lap 20. And then they stopped again on 54 with Tim still in the car. We saw that stop and now they're bringing him in this lap and so Russell will get in shortly. Matt, you mentioned Todd Kelly's situation. The story coming out of the Jack Daniels garage on that is that Todd's got himself into a very uncomfortable situation with his seat belts, particularly the crutch belt. And that's why a couple of times he swerved off the track as he tries to readjust that problem. Uh, it sounds like his times are getting up now. He's got himself back into a comfortable spot and fingers crossed everything runs smoothly. Thank you, Dokes. Ouch. Bouncy again. Look as though that car's a little bit of a handful. So Tim Slade has done, what do we say, 61 laps. Now, we'll now hand over the reins to uh, Russell Ingle to take it to the end. There's as much preparation to get out of the car as there is to get in. That comes down. Tim gets pushed out, yanked out, and Russell gets pushed in. It's Not like, like you argue with. It's like something out of City Homicide when you see the guys get arrested by the cops and they shove their head down and throw them into the car. When you come away from an endurance race, you know, you have a look at yourself as Tanda comes in the lane. You can't believe the week later where all the bruises came from, places that you can't imagine you could bruise yourself if you do. Should try 10 weeks of dance. Time stop for fuel here for HRT. No fancy load cells on the fuel rigs anymore, so it's a stopwatch and a flow. And when the light illuminates on that dry brake coupling for the refueler, that's a cue to stop pumping fuel in. They're not waiting, in other words, they're not waiting for it to come back up the neck on the vent side. Oh, well, it's already come up there anyway. No. No. Hold it, hold it. Our 18's in. Warren Luff. He and Jonathan Webb have done a great job today. Very, very consistent, very solid. Well and truly embedded in the top 10. You can see Jim Beam racing ready and Luff will stay with Car 18 for this run home. Does a really good job. Another of the guys that we wheel out from not racing full time. He's the driving standards observer, I guess the Thomas Mazira of the V8 Ute series, and he's got his work cut out there as well. Well, Tim Slade just getting down as much water as he can, rubbing the back and giving it a stretch. Welcome to endurance racing. What was it like? <laughs> yeah, the first thing was, was really good. I managed to sort of get into a pretty good rhythm and have pretty much as good a pace as, as anyone. And towards the end of that stint, my, uh, my back started to, to hurt a little bit due to the uh, late change from the super cheap auto 67 to the 39. Um, you know, dude had a few troubles getting in and out. So I uh, did three laps in that car before qualifying on uh, on Saturday morning. So uh, it's just been a big learning process for me. I haven't driven one of these cars at the track before. So we'll let, uh, let Russ do the hard work for the rest of the race. Hopefully, um, you know, we're in a, in a pretty good position. And your endurance debut, did Russell give you much advice? Yeah, yeah Russ, Russ is really good all the time, you know, whether it's a, a normal sprint round or, or the endurance race. And he obviously wants to see me as go as, uh, as good as possible being uh, being teamed up this weekend as opposed to a normal sprint round. But you're going great, Tim. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Brett. And uh, Triple Eight responding here because uh, Garth Tander was very speedy when he had new tyres at the beginning of his stint. Garth is now coming around the final turn. And what they couldn't afford to do at Team Vodafone was let Garth have a new tyre advantage while they were an old tyre. Right, so they've mate, come in. He should come into shot right at the top of the screen, Garth Tander, as Craig Lowndes heads back out. So that's uh, the kind of stuff that goes on in strategy land with teams eyeing each other there. There's Tander with the lights on. Yeah, and if they waited a lap or two there, that could have been a different outcome. So they didn't find themselves uh, 
in that position because they reacted appropriately. Hey boys, just watch uh, Lowndes on his outlap here. They had two green green tyres on the outside of that car, as in not scrub, because you like to exit the pit lane here with tyres that have had a little rud, run, got a little bit of grip, but they were shiny green. So this one will be worth watching. This is uh, Murphy. Has been uh, creeping back up in the top half dozen, slightly out of sequence from where they pitted at the beginning of the race. First stop for car number 51 was lap 13 with Mark Scaife in the car. Winterbottom's come in now as well. Murphy rejoins. Oh, Lance, so there was a big roll centre adjustment with the speed brace. I noticed in the pit stop for that car. So remember we heard Craig say, look, I'm not sure what I want at the moment. In the end, they did make a decision. Here's Winterbottom. Courtney's now the leader. So Craig Lowndes and Garth Tander are on the Gardner straight. There they go. Mark Winterbottom. Reset fuel, brake balance, cold tyres. Heads back out. Button on the steering wheel, zero is the fuel counter. So they know where they're at with their fuel burn. Always important to know that you've got stone cold tyres on the car. Here's Lowndes, watch this at Hay Shed. Big slide. Caught it all up, had inches to spare on the outside, but uh, pushing very hard after that stop on tyres that had not yet fully come up to pressure or therefore temperature. Pretty sure it was David Bernard who went across in front of, uh, of Mark Winterbottom. Bernard in car 34 will have to pit again soon. So what about James Courtney in car 17? Well, he has already entered pit lane. This is uh, the Bottolo race team. And you'll see there, the Jim Beam racer just went past on our left. Courtney has come in. So that leaves Todd Kelly now in control of the race. And somewhere in the next five or six laps, car seven will have to come back into pit lane as well. And Todd, Todd's pace was a 37, a 137 even on that last lap. So the gremlins that they had early on where it was going past the commentary box, massively misfiring, have uh, obviously been resolved. Hey, got, here, mate. We've got Lounge goes past, Hander goes past. We're tracking Winterbottom to see where James Courtney will come out in relation to Frosty. There's car six. And now James exits pit lane. So the effective positions, with Todd Kelly leading the race and Craig Baird behind him, both of those still have to pit. The effective positions will be that Lowndes is leading the race, Tander is second, Mark Winterbottom will be third, and James Courtney fourth. And Important to make the point that they're fueled to the end now, Matt. Shane Van Gisbergen rejoins. So there was no real loss or gain from the top four. Still just under 30 laps to go. Neil, I saw it too. There's clouds up ahead. <laughs> Short story on the back of the seat. <laughs> Leanne Tander with a couple of messages there to some nieces and nephews. And this is Craig Baird, who's second yet to pit to hand back to Paul Dumbrell. Just a big puff of smoke coming out of car 22. Leanne about to jump back into car triple three. The Wilson security, the only one surviving in this race. The thing is for Todd Kelly, pretty soon, sooner or later, he is going to have to come in for his third pit stop. So too is Craig Baird. 
So you'll see on your ticket that we've got car number seven first, car 22 second. Both of those guys will have to come back and pit. So that means that the Lowndes Wind Cup entry is your effective race leader. And Garth Tander will not let it shake. I'd be expecting Todd in in the next couple of laps. They last stopped in the number seven car on lap number 52. Fuel tyres and the driver change. Probably see him in about lap 87. Baird's now in. Now Tander's had that advantage again that we saw on the last tyre set. And uh, he's closed that margin right down to Lowndes. Four out of the last five laps, Jan has been quicker than Lance. Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't think it's quite as good as it was in terms of the, the, the extra pace over Craig's car as we saw in the last stint, because they smartened Craig's car up a little bit, but he's definitely roped him in. Remember the championship at play, because the winner of this race, both drivers in the winning car get 200 points. And at the moment, the championship table has Jamie Winkup ahead of Will Davison. Now, they're not in the car, but they'll still get the 200, depending on who wins. That, that hurts. Oh, a little bit yeah. of traffic hurts. That doesn't take much. Look at that. He lost all of his margin there. That was Andrew Fisher, the Jesus Falcon, the Triple Eight car that's been getting helped by Triple Eight. They didn't help Triple Eight back. It's kind of like a safety car scenario for Tander, isn't it? Now he's just been drafted all the way back up on Triple Eight. So now it's on. It is on for Young and Old. Down at 10. Tander will go through and get the race lead. Craig didn't even bother to argue. You hear the amount of throttle resets in Craig's car. He's looking for grip. So Todd Kelly still yet to pit. He's going to go round again at least. Remember Matty About Nilsson's words. So Matty Nilsson's okay. words to Garth Tander: Don't drive it like a qualifying car. So, um, oh, they were birds. And uh, over the years, testing down here, we've all collected one or two. Oh, Lounds off. Oh. Lounds off. Phew. And recovers. <laughs> it was only about three seconds ago when he was counselled over the radio just to be patient. No problems. He said, OK. Yeah. Now, also, HRT won't want Garth to hammer too hard because you rob Peter to pay Paul, you get a little gain now in this early life in these tyres, but if you belt him too hard in the midsection of the race, he won't have as much to fight with, and he'll be conscious of that. How quickly the game can change. Craig Lowndes spent... Well, that started when Craig got a run on Garth down the straight in the draft, and then uh, Garth made a little move just to cover and uh, both of them were pushing to the absolute limit. Look at this. And then watch watch over the roof line here. Woof. That's enough to take your eyeliners away as a driver. And then just a little bit on the road. Pretty good save. Not hard to swivel that, not easy to swivel that car back for the double apex southern loop. Oh, he put all four over. Yeah. Another day at the office, really. I was about to say, it's lounge, what do you expect? Yeah, that, was, uh, that was a bit Base scary. With Todd Kelly leading this race at the moment, 19 seconds down the road, our pit smart software is pretty much labelling him as coming out fifth behind the Jim Beam number 17 car. They're pitting Todd this lap, just heard the call. There you go. So, so lap 88, it's a lap longer than I thought. It's okay as they go around towards Siberia, but back the other way, there's some clouds are hovering. Northwest is uh, where the weather is. <laughs> and you've got to remember that these pitches that you're watching at home also go along pit lane into every garage, so every team is seeing what you're seeing, and they'll be scrambling now for the radars. You just get some deja vu from 2008. Oh. Don't mention the war. Fascinating finish unfolding here. 25 laps. Still ahead of us. The question is, will that hit 
that's where the weather's coming from, the northwest. And uh, there's a more substantial sh a change to come through here at 8 o'clock tonight. This is going to be one of those deals where anything's possible. And reset your fuel. Interested to see where these guys pop out back into the mix. David Bernard and Greg Ritter. Bernard is still behind the wheel. Todd Kelly is pitting now, so... They've changed positions. Uh, yeah, Tanda's leading. Yeah. I looked away for one minute. All righty, so Todd's in. Yeah. Yeah, we saw it down at turn 10. You had a look on your face that scared me there, Matty. No, I'm just trying to figure out exactly where David Bernard's dropped back in. I think Greg Ritter's jumped back into that car for the run home. Not many cars left on the lead lap. Last year there was 12 at the end of 113 laps, and it's about the same now. And he came out just in front of Garth and Craig, yep. so he's just on the lead lap. So here's Todd for his final stop. Should come out in fifth. Yep. No, correction, make it six because Warren Luff's just gone screaming by in the second Jim Beam car. So, Todd's back out, as predicted, Aaron. Good short, good call there, into sixth. And again, the traffic. So, Tanda from Lowndes. And their sector splits at the moment sort of suggest that things have settled down again. This is what happened in the previous stint between the two of them. So, you know, Garth had that burst of pace. We saw the easy move into 10. Craig sidestepped him. But now he's absolutely hanging in there. No problem. The other team, Vodafone car. Simon Center go. Thompson. Okay. James Thompson sticking with the car for the run home. Was the last car in the lead lap. Craig made half a second on that lap. 35-4-0. 135-4-0 for Garth. 135 even for Craig. And uh, see the way Garth's car was behaving in the mid corner at turn two. That's a big giveaway. Door just a little bit of a jar for Craig Lowndes to have a look. He'll come back at him for sure. Up at four. Garth slams it shut that time. So Garth will be trimming in the car now, having a fiddle with the anti-roll bars in the car. Eighteen seconds back is Mark Winterbottom in third. So there's nothing in it between these guys. Fourth is James Courtney. Fifth is Warren Love. So the two Jim Beam racers played a beautiful card, and Warren Luff and Jonathan Webb in particular have started this race in 11th. Two non-regular drivers as car 88 finds the dirt. Two non-regular drivers in Luff and Webb are inside the top five of the first enduro. Sixth is Dean Canto. Zinger replay will show what's happened to Thompson in car double eight. That was the outlap. Cold tyres yep. trapped him there. I spoke to him this morning and uh, this is a man who's vastly experienced with great success internationally in the British Touring Car Championship. And, and uh, he said, look, it's like going back to square one, like beginning all over again. Big heavy car, low grip, and, and he's just got a lesson on, on cold tyre, low grip of a V8 supercar, and it's uh, much lower than he thought. Gart Tander and Craig Lowndes are going blow for blow, lap for lap. It's Hull Holden Racing Team against Team Vodafone who we all know will make the switch to the general side from 2010. So there's so many little subplots. There's championship points for their co-drivers who are currently one and two in the title race. There they are. <laughs> Thank you, Will. Thank you, Jamie. It's, it's a remarkable scenario, isn't it? Their mates, they spent time living together. They're in opposition teams, two of the fiercest opponents, and they're at it again out there at the moment. Um, and, and it's fascinating. We've seen some tremendous high-quality racing battles between them. There's great respect between them. Yeah, quite often they've looked after one another on the track. Obviously, stakes have escalated in the last couple of years. Will was coming into the category a couple of years behind, and it changes the relationship. These guys have been close for many years. 
good job, mate. 20 to go, 20 laps. But you can only be so close when you're in two absolute rival teams at the top of their game. Look at the draft benefit that Craig was getting just at the bottom then. Now, compare the lap times. 135.78, Garth Tander. 135.65, Craig Lowndes. And here's the man that's third in the queue at the moment, Mark Witterbottom. We'll get a read on his time, 135.8. So three of the best teams, three of the best drivers, three of the best cars in the field on that lap, lap 94 of 113. There's less than a tenth between them. The only difference is Mark Winterbottom's 18 seconds back further down the road. Here we go. Lowndes tries to squeeze it up on the inside of four. Garth gave him just enough room and not one millimetre more. Some Morse code on the rear bumper. And Garth knew he'd have the inside line for the next one, so he didn't fight it too hard at turn four. Nose to tail racing in a fight for the finish. 20 laps to go. Good battle of wits. Both cars have shown quite different traits on their new tyre set. Ooh, 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 ooh. Garth's running on the exact race line, but what it does is it, it keeps your pace up, but it also makes you a little bit vulnerable. And Craig's got a, a, a style habit where he likes to point the car at the apex very early in the turning procedure. And so you have these moments when you sit here and look at it where you, you suck lots of air. <laughs> it's pretty spooky. Great to watch though. This time around, 136.61 for Garth, 136.58 for Craig. You're watching the two of the best have a great duel here. And a 36-3 that lap for Mark Winterbottom, so uh, three tenths, three and a half tenths faster for Mark Winterbottom on that lap. And James Courtney, and this happened earlier on, a 35-8, so of the top four, he's very quick. Here we go. Run at turn four, is there space? Craig had the two wheels up on the gravel. Did you hear all the gravel striking near the guards then at four? Again, the Lowndes technique in early. Tanda using the classic lines. Both of them using second gear at Siberia. And the sector splits to the first intermediate. There was one one hundredth of a second between the two of them then. Sam Walter is lap traffic. He's the car in front. Good job. He yeah, did a good job at recognising race leaders coming, gave them tons of space. Hard to do when you're busy with your own race car. You've got to be thinking about your own act, looking forward, but at the same time keeping a half an eye on what's happening behind. A little tap of the brake there for Tanda. Remember what I said before at that last corner, sometimes you need to load the nose just a little whisker, just wash a few kilometres an hour off carry too much speed you have that scary slide moment like we saw Craig have a bit earlier in the race. Unbelievable. 36.35 for Garth, 36.45 for Craig. Gee, Jamie Wincup, what's this like sitting here watching your teammate in a sprint race to the line? Mate, this is out of control. I, I, it's much easier being out there, trust me, but what we're seeing is two completely different cars. Um, we generally get better as the stint goes on, so this is on. For, for poor old Davo and I were sitting in the pits helpless, you know, but these guys are pros and we're telling Lounsey to push hard, but what we don't want to do is a drive through or anything silly like that, you know, so um, it's going to be on right to the end. The car's all good and holding up to the finish? The car's perfect, yeah, and what Lounsey's saying, mechanically the car's 100%. Um, it's just a matter of managing your tyres and, and having speed when you need it. Um, Hopefully it doesn't come down to this track position at the moment. You know, Lance is going to push hard, but as I say, we, we don't need any anything silly. Right, take a deep breath, mate. You're going to need it. Yeah, thanks, mate. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. He just dropped the right-hand side of it off on the exit of uh, turn six then. I think you've got to be a little bit careful up there. If you just catch the wrong edge of those sawtooth curbs, you can damage the tyre wall. But he's made the margin back up again. He's got a little bit of extra pace at the moment, but he's got this thing that's in front of him, and it's pretty wide. This is the exit out of Siberia, and watch Lowndes. He'll drop it over the kerb here, onto the gravel, and then when you come back on, you catch the edge of those sawtooth kerbs, and they can puncture the inside wall of the tyre. That's the relativity. And again, nothing in it. 
Four How's the numbers, Matty? Yeah. Four one hundredths of a second in the last one. Well, you're sitting here trying to look pretty relaxed, but I'll bet the heartbeat's going a million miles an hour. Oh, you bet it is. There's not much, not much I can do sitting here, but uh, we've got an incredible race on our hands here. And um, what can I do? It's been, a, it's been a big day. We've been nose to tail all day, and Garth's done a mega job, job to get ahead of Craig. But Craig's looking pretty strong at the moment. So um, as we speak, this is getting pretty too, too close. <laughs> Uh, well, this is a mega race, so I want to I win this more than anything, I can tell you. But uh, we've got the best man for the job in there, so he'll be giving it everything he's got. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Thanks. And the fastest driver of the top four at the moment remains Courtney. Winterbottom is also quicker than these two who are fumbling each other a little bit. But the margins are huge. It's 20 seconds from Winterbottom to the... Uh, sorry, from Courtney to the race lead, I apologise. And, uh, you know, that's a, an awful long way to go. Mark Scaife... Fully debriefing on his stint and uh, watching all the numbers as we are. Well, his car's in 11th position at the moment, but we are paying particular attention to this one because it's a ripper of a battle. Now Lowndes gets a little bit pushy on Tanda. Around 11 and 12, just stepped it up a notch. Heading towards the 100 lap mark. Their teammates are sitting in the garage helpless. Half of them... Wants to sit there like you and I and just be spectators and enjoy it. Yeah, Craig's starting to get a little bit agitated now. And uh, we saw that shot before of Jason Bright. Whatever happened to him, they're flat towing him back to the pit, so he's out of business. Pressure on now. We're seeing lock breaks. Lowndes makes a mistake. So did Tanda. They both raise a little bit of blue smoke here. The pressure's coming on for a lead change. Lowndes on the attack. Looking down the inside at three. Awkward place to do it. Oh, he's done it. He's done it. An amazing manoeuvre from Lowndes. Unbelievable. What a way to get the race lead back. Out of turn three. That is guts. Good recovery from the big moment that he had on the braking approach to turn two. You don't often see that at turn three. I thought he was positioning for some activity down at four. Here it is again. This is the moment at turn two. Watch. Both had a, a, a wriggle in there and then Lowndes actually locked the front left-hand corner of the car, went wide and then has a massive run on the exit of turn two. Actually gets up the inside before the apex at three and then because Garth's won wide, he's had to ease the throttle in the greasy line there See all the rubber debris. Yes. That hurt. Well, there's really not much to write home about according to the Bureau coming our way. Hopefully it will miss us. It's because been... this fight has been simply spectacular. Craig Lowndes has the lead. It's now two seconds from this man, Garth Tander. So once Lowndes got around him, he managed to just pull further away. This is an interesting scenario on a Zinger replay. While you were gone, Garth had to uh, pull up alongside car 333, which has now been driven by his wife, Leanne Tander. So Leanne gave Hubby a lot of room there to get through. They came up against some traffic and we thought that was going to turn out that way. But sooner or later, they would come up alongside each other on the track and um, Thankfully, it all ended beautifully. So no arguments at home tonight. Roland Dane looks on. Jamie Winkup in the background. Before that, it was Will Davison and Rihanna. And now, the fight to the finish. Surprised that we've only had eight laps in total of safety car intervention. Two point one to go. Twelve laps to go. First of all, for the Coulthard car, with that massive failure early. Uh, the massive off also for the Team BOC car. Kind of expected that there'd be more through the course of the day. And of course, to go back to your point there, Matty, we expected weather. And it's dodged all around here at the moment. Now, the margin uh, back to Winterbottom from the race lead is 15 and a half seconds. Back to James Courtney off the lead. These are total margins from the leader, 20 odd seconds. So there's about five seconds between this man and James Courtney. There it is for you, confirmed. So there's no real danger at the moment of anything much changing. And in fact, on the last lap, Mark Winterbottom has eased a bit of margin back out again on James Courtney, who's about four tenths quicker. So they haven't really got a response at the moment for uh, 
the two leaders, and it's a 2.3 second margin between Lowndes and Tander. This is turn four for Winterbottom, second gear. Has been a solid enduro hit out. You know, unless things drastically change, they're not going to get themselves further up in third, but has been a good solid hit out for both Mark and Stephen Richards and FPR, given that the other car of Dean Cando and Luke Yulden is also in the top ten. They're in seventh at the moment. See how the boys handled that right-hander at turn eight, which we call hay shed, that you do is you just sneak it up into fifth gear just a little bit early, place the right side of the car up on the top of the kerb and just fan the throttle ever so gently and then recommit. But the feeling through there in the car is amazing. I did a, a day in one of the cars here December last year and uh, it's always a real rush. There's great airspeed through there and a huge amount of movement through the car. And, and we've seen some terrific racing so far there this weekend with people really getting stuck into it there. So you can see just how close first and second are, not only on the road but on those green and blue dots and then gives you an indication of how far back third is. That's what 15 seconds represents on the track. And at uh, HRT they've said to Garth, just be patient, he may come back to us. So, you know, they're, they're not throwing in the towel just yet. Jamie Wincup highlighted the point a bit earlier about the variance between the two cars and where they're strong and weak and how they come on at different times. They're looking OK at the moment. Doesn't take much to change things. What's our take on this as we go to the super cheap auto about this 1000? Well, look, Lowndes, Tander, Winterbottom, Courtney. The big teams are about where you'd expect them to be. And here with uh, more Craig Lowndes' engineer. We're really interested to know, Jerry, what was happening there? Craig's car definitely wasn't great out of the pits, but as the stint's gone on, it's got very fast. Why is that? Well, definitely, it looks like our cars are running a bit softer than the HRT cars, so we look after our tyres a bit better. So they'll be quick off the mark, but then we'll come back to them, and at the end of the stint, we should be, uh, we were, the shows were a bit quicker than them, so all good. Keep focus, mate. Thanks, mate. Jeremy is the JJ that you hear Craig refer to on the radio. He's regular race engineer. Pulled away four tenths this lap. Courtney has been gaining a little bit in the last few laps on Winterbottom, but not massive amounts. And let me just stop and look at it for a moment with Team Vodafone. Coming into this weekend, they've been on the podium in the last eight enduros across the last four years. And Jamie Winkup has been as well, even though we drove for Tasman in 2005, he did as well. It's a phenomenal record. It's just simply quite amazing. But these two guys have done an amazing job today. Warren Luff behind the wheel, Jonathan Webb, who leads the Fujitsu series. They've stepped into the second Jim Beam car. They're 34 seconds down the road from the sister car with James Courtney behind the wheel. And we talked about HRT, Team Vodafone and FPR. And here are their second cars. They're the next ones in the queue. No other team is in between them. Been a pretty good effort too from Paul Dumbrell and Craig Baird. In car 22, currently eighth. This is all for position here. These uh, Dean Cato, Paul Dumbrell, Russell Ingle, these guys are all fighting for additional points. Well, the pressure is intense no matter where you are in the field. Eight laps left of the LH 500. Starting to get a little bit darker. 27 year old Paul Dumbrell partnered up with uh, Craig Baird for this one and for Bathurst. And he'll be happy with his first weekend in the famous Holden Racing Team race suit. Top 10 finish is beckoning. Zinger replay. Bit of trouble here for car number 11, Jack Perkins. We've seen Dale Wood already have an excursion or two. And now Dale takes, uh, rather Jack takes the Dodo car in for a bit of uh, a kitty litter service. Guys, we lost Mark's game from the commentary box this weekend, but boy, he's done a good job in the car. He and Greg Murphy going from 20 seconds, Scafey, up to knocking on the top 10. It's a good result. It has been a good result. I mean, the guys have worked very hard over the weekend. You know, the car's got better and better, and it seems 
as the tyre get further into the run and as the fuel load comes off, the car's actually reasonably good. I mean, it's not far away now from Tander's pace there, Greg, so it tends to flow and, and work the tyre reasonably well. So there's a bit to be found and obviously Bathurst we're looking forward to. Now the experience for you, you enjoyed it? Oh, I loved it. I mean, get a rating, rating from you and Larko at nine, nine and a half. Doesn't get any better than that, Brett. Have you missed Cromley this weekend? No, I don't miss him at all. Right, oh, thanks, Gabby. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that goes two ways, by the way. <laughs> so they made up ten. I think Scofie did, what did he do, 50 laps? Yeah, pretty much bang on 50 laps in his return. So Murph's done a very, very good and solid job to bring it home. This here is Warren Luff and Rick Kelly around at turn four. They're racing for positions five and six. And that's a performance and a half from Jim Beam Racing. Look at Rick, just pestering the back of car 18. A lot of guys struggling now with rear tyres in particular. We saw Dumbrell pick off Canto. And laugh, look at this car loose through the hay shed. He's done a really good job this year for a fellow that's just part-timing again in, in V8. I know you devoted some chat to him earlier on, but he was good in all the co-driver sessions that he's appeared in through the year. And um, he's been out of a full-time V8 supercar ride for a little while. But uh, he's generally done a pretty good job every time I've seen him step in the car this year. So you've got to dip your hat in the city. He's really comfortable in the car. He's, the car is just nice to drive. It suits the style. He's the man that's sharing the car with the race leader, Jamie Wincup. I'll tell you why he's smiling, down. because the gap between Lowndes and Tander at the front is now three seconds. It's just eased out a little, hasn't it? And uh, just looks at this stage like this battle here. Maybe slightly favouring Rick Kelly. Looks like he's got good pace there at the moment. He's got to get around him. And in Championship World, if they finish as they are, Lowndes and Wing Cup will gain 20 points on Tander and Davison. Of course, they're effectively racing each other. They came in this weekend, Wing Cup v Davison, one and two. Tander third, Lowndes fourth. And we came to the weekend with a 183-point margin between Wing Cup and Davison, so that's going to open up. Went out, 20 to, points. Uh, went out to 187 after the points that they got for qualifying yesterday. So pretty much the you know, situation hasn't changed that much. We all know that in the endurance world, you can drop a bundle of points in an instant. So all of the top four contenders for the title, assuming that nothing happens in the next five laps, of great note, should walk away with... A steady bank of points, and the fight continues for the championship of 09. But this one is not done yet. Car 888 has some lap traffic in the Autobahn car in between him and Garth Tander. Same goes for David Bernard and Greg Ritter's entry, car 34, and car 15. Nathan Pretty and Ben Collins. So things just changed dramatically, didn't they? After Lowndes finally got Rick, round. Rick got him, by the way. Rick has got up on that spot on Warren Luff, and uh, Luff is now asking, what's the situation behind me? So he wants the gap to the next. So that little mistake down in the braking area at turn 10 has uh, been enough for Rick to be able to get right. Here we go. Wasn't without a fight, though, or an argument. But it should be safe. He's got 13 seconds on Paul Dunbrell. The point I was about to make was how remarkable it was once that Craig Lowndes got around Garth Tander. A bit of panel work coming loose off car double eight. Lowndes just shot away. From that moment on, you were riding as Lowndes took an almighty lunge at turn three to get the lead back off Tander. From that moment on, it's been nothing but a jet car, triple eight, in terms of first versus second. It's another point four of a second that uh, Craig Lowndes has made on Garth Tander on this lap. Got it out to just, well, it's near enough to call it three seconds now, 2.9951. So he's, uh, he's just taken a little piece of pressure off again. Six-time race winner at this circuit, Craig Lowndes. If he can bring it home here, he will equal Mark Scaife and Glenn Seaton.
on seven race wins at Phillip Island. It's no wonder you always hear this circuit referred to as fast and flowing. It suits this man's style. That's why he's so good to watch when he's on his game. Ditto that for Garth Tander as well, who's a perfectionist. But it's been such a ominous warning for the rest of the field. They've been trying to stop Team Vodafone at Mount Panorama for the last three years. The best place non-regular is uh, Warren Love. And, uh, Dean Cando returning to V8 Supercar and getting into the top ten. So good efforts from those fellas. Here Russell we go. Is giving to go, mate. Paul Dumbrell a bit of a hurry up. I think he's got him here. Better exit out of turn two helped. And so Russell up to seventh now. Well, that's great for super cheap auto racing. They had to make some late changes. And uh, young Tim Slade paired with Russell. Now he's going to look at a top 10, if not top six finish in an endurance race in the V8 Supercar Championship. wonder what it is about Team Vodafone and these Enduros, what it is that they've put their finger on, they've managed to nail. Was it just that the planets aligned beautifully? Car with good power, with good efficiency, that looks after its rear tyres, with two five-star drivers in it, and perfect teamwork. So, you know, you add it up, it's an equation, you bolt it together and they're there or thereabouts. Mind you, you know, we're up to almost 500 kilometres of racing and after 500 kilometres of racing with only eight laps of safety car intervention, there is only 2.1 seconds between Lowndes and Tander. It's not exactly a calendar. Yeah, and Mark Winterbottom has chipped away too. He's back up to 12 seconds adrift. So at one stage he was 20 seconds back in third position. So he's done a good job. He's sort of had to do his own job out there in third. Lowndes and Tander were having an almighty scrap. Lowndes landed the blow that counted and he's been... Craig lost a bit of ground then. So 38.3 that lap plays a 37.1 so it immediately pulls it down to 1.67 seconds so I mean, it's a bit academic but it just goes to show you don't need much of an interruption all of a sudden the airspace vanishes quickly. I don't think it's any big deal. To go back to 2005 in the team better electrical days to find the last time that Craig Lowndes won a race at Phillip Island. His teammate Jamie Wincup won one of the sprint races here just last year. As we've made mention earlier, Garth Tander was one half of the combination that won the 500. So the cream has risen to the top. Mate, what's he done? A big push behind you. I can see that, thank you. <laughs> yeah, he's made 0.2 of a second in this sector. So he's having a mega push. It's funny, you get that little sense, little senses here and there of just when there's someone else lurking, you get a flash of colour in a mirror. And, you know, there's a relativity, sometimes it stays the same for a long period of time. And, you know, you're always on one particular spot on the track and the other guy's at another. It doesn't take much. And we saw that previous lap where a second vanished quickly. All of a sudden changes the rhythm and it can wake you up. Sometimes you just got to be a little careful one you don't... Lap, mate. One point two to go. That you don't overreact. Four and a half kilometres of racing to come. We're nearly done for the first of the Enduros. Lounds. In control, turn one. Tander hunting him down. It's under a second now. He's coming at him. A little bit of rain just starting to drizzle out there at the moment. But nothing like we thought might happen. i tell you what, he's on him. He's at him. Look at this. There's plenty of track left still. Where, what's going on here? Oh, he's oh. come up right on him. Can Garth Tander hold on this and could... get past or will Craig Lowndes keep the lead in this 500, a dramatic finish. Unbelievable, side by side. Car number two shoots ahead 
and the Holden Racing Team have plucked it out of nowhere. Where did that happen? And how did that happen? What's all that about? It's an amazing scenario. On the last lap, he's come from nowhere with a pile of pace. Something must surely be up with the Team Vodafone car. That is out of control. Garth Tander. I think he knows Craig Lowndes. Look. They're swarming on him, the lap traffic, so he's asking what's going on behind in terms of Mark Winterbottom. But unbelievably, incredibly, amazingly, this man and Will Davison have all of a sudden, from nowhere, jumped up and become the LNH 500 champs. That is the one that got away. What was the problem? Wow. Front right tyre was what we just heard. I think we can talk to Garth Tandy. Can you hear us there, GT? Garth Tandy, yeah, mate, congratulations. Gotcha. How about that, eh? Holy smoke, mate. There you go. You never give up, do you? Four and a half kilometres to go. You are a second and a half behind and you win the race. Well done. I thought she was over and out. My car was using its tyres massively in the middle part of the stint, so we just conserved the car. We knew that tyres are a bit of an issue, so um, I can't believe that. That's awesome. Just a word about your co-driver, Garth Will Davison, put in a fantastic effort. Yeah, mate, he's no co-driver. We're equal number ones at HRT, and um, he did a great job. We played exactly how we wanted to strategy-wise. Turned the fuel up when we needed it, and um, awesome. Well said and well done. Congratulations, Garth. Thanks, boys. Will Davison, can you believe it? You and Garth Tander, the LNH 500 champions. What a last lap. Oh, that motorsport, I tell you, that's, that's the highest of highs. And uh, it's not over till the fat lady sings. And uh, obviously, Craig ran into some trouble at the end there. We're, we're all a bit tight on fuel numbers. So we're all stressing about our own fuel numbers. And I don't know if we had a tie issue or whatever but um, well done guys congratulations to our guys Holden's 40th anniversary uh, in motorsport tomorrow so what a reward to Holden and to our supporters and uh, and this just feels unbelievable feels really really good fantastic for the guys and of course now we head to the super cheap auto Bathurst 1000 you guys are looking great for that too yeah well we got a sniff of the wind and then Lowndes got back in front of us and we're already sort of saying well this is extra motivation to get him at Bathurst and um, that was a, a very pleasant surprise at the finish there, so um, you know we're carrying some great momentum into that big one. Go and celebrate with the team. Congratulations. Yeah, we, will, we will. Yeah. Will Davison celebrating with the Toll Holden Racing Team. Craig Louds, Matty White here. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. Mate, everybody wants to know what what happened. Uh, well, unfortunately, a front uh, front right hand tyre is about to let go. It started flapping, so can't turn left, and uh, yeah, just had nowhere to do. Well, basically, just had to uh, finish the race. Craig, it's Neil. Did that just happen literally on the last lap, or did you get some early warning? Uh, it uh, started to do it sort of about three laps left, and uh, just tried to look after it, and hopefully we had a gap, which we didn't, so uh, them's the brakes. Yeah, well, disappointment, mate. You did a great job today, fantastic driving, but I'm, I know how you feel, and I'm sure lots of people sympathise. Tough break, great job nonetheless. Thank you. What a remarkable weekend. It has been a great event, the LNH 500. Making the presentations for us, the CEO of LNH, the place electricians call home. Robin Norris is here. Thank you, Robin. And LNH are also a great supporter of Canteen. And from Canteen, Nick Gabriel is here as well to make the presentations. Thank you, Nick. In third place, Ford Performance Racing, Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards. <laughs> Boys, congratulations. Great headway. That was a big result this weekend. Yeah, thanks, Mark. It's, uh, it's a great result and um, nice to be back on the, uh, back on the podium. So, uh, you know, yesterday was fantastic. Today we're here and I think we're really building momentum for the big ones. So, uh, you know, Ford fans, all kind, Alan H, um, all our sponsors that are here, uh, you know, thanks to, thanks to everyone. It's, um, yeah, it's a great result and nice to be back up here. Congratulations, Richo Frosty. Well done. Well, it was a spectacular finish in second place, Team Vodafone, Craig Lowndes and Jamie Wincup.
Jamie, Lounsey, you were right in there all weekend and boy, you fought it out to the end. Yeah, thanks, Barrett. Uh, what a battle. Well done, Will. Well done, Garth. Lounsey, awesome job, mate. You shouldn't be disappointed. And uh, oh, the, the Penguins got something to say. There you go. <laughs> Look, I just want to thank the guys. It's, uh, yeah, it wasn't the way we wanted to finish it, but to all the guys, the team, Vodafone, thank you very much. We had uh, same position this time last year. Hopefully we can make Bathurst the same as well. Thank you. Well done, Jamie. Well done, Lounsey. And our winners of the Allen H 500 for 2009 for the Toll Holden Racing Team, Will Davison and Garth Tander. <laughs> GT, Will, congratulations. Now that was a finish. <laughs> Yeah, how about that? Um, with five laps to go, the boys said, just conserve fuel, we're probably going to finish second. And, um, and then they said, last lap, just give it go as hard as you can. So he did and thought, geez, Lounsey's slowing up a bit, we might be able to get him. But uh, yeah, so that was amazing. So uh, thanks very much to all our guys. Fantastic job all weekend. To our sponsors, Holden, Toll, HSV, Bridgestone and Mobile. It's the 40th anniversary tomorrow of the Holden dealer team's first involvement in motorsport. So uh, not a bad way to celebrate. And, uh, yeah, what a day. Just a big congratulations and a huge thank you to all our guys down at the team because uh, what a day, what a race with uh, the Triple Eight guys. That was nose to tail all day and uh, privileged to be a part of. Honour to drive with GT. And uh, to get that win, you know, you've got to get the ties to last round here. We all know that. So uh, congratulations, guys. You deserve this. Thank you. The LNH 500 for 2009, Ford Performance Racing, Team Vodafone and the Toll Holden Racing Team.